Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not OnlyFans customers are causing harm, and we are starting right now with Shark30's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us first time. Shark, the floor is all yours. Sure, thanks for having me on, James. So, porn and OnlyFans, we all know OnlyFans, um, you know, it blew up over the the issues that was going on around the country. Um, it's very... It, it, it's very interesting because it's kind of like weaved into many facets and kind of supplanted itself as like a household name. Um, uh, but we typically talk about the people who are making the content, but uh, it seemed like we want to talk about the people who are uh, imbibing in the content, which is perfectly fine. I think it's worth talking about. Uh, this could, it's possible that this could touch on like the broader concept of porn in our society in general and what uh, role it has and uh, what it can and what it can't do, what it should, what it shouldn't do. Um, and there are many avenues that we could take there. Uh, personally, I we are going to be taking the position uh, that um, OnlyFans uh, consumers are not causing harm. And not only not causing harm, could actually be providing a valuable service and could be uh, doing something um, either neutral or good for the people who are uh, who who are providing the content. Um, when, when it comes to just porn generally, it's a pretty decent um, a thing in, in society. It's been correlated with reducing violent crime, especially sexual crime. It's been uh, correlated uh, to having uh, to helping uh, marriages along and having stronger marriages. It can do many things, um, and it can be many things. People can uh, be uh, uh, people can use it unhealthily, as you can do literally anything. Uh, but that does not mean that simply because uh, it exists, or simply because you can use it, or because you buy it, means that you're doing something wrong, or um, something wrong is happening. Also, I noticed I'm going to just take this down. <laughs> what are you here? It was given to me by a friend. Uh, it was. It's typically obstructed by my chat, but it was given to me by a friend. Um, so, so yeah, and I can throw it over to Maddie. Great, thanks, Shark. Um, and let me know if you can't hear me very well. I think my uh, microphone is slowly dying. But uh, OnlyFans customers do not create harm. And as Shark had mentioned, they, in fact, have a lot of positive impacts and um, lead to positive outcomes. One thing I want to um, point out as we're getting started here is that in order to claim that there's harm being done, you need to demonstrate that it is leading to a tangibly negative outcome. And that is in direct correlation to what you're proposing the cause is going to be. So I'm curious to hear what metric the um, opposition is using to define what is harmful that is um, absent of their own personal moral ideology. Because if we're talking about um, things like addiction, there's plenty of science and evidence that shows that uh, porn does not lead to addiction. In fact, it is simply um, something that people with more like impulse control issues um, default to, or they may argue that it changes brain chemistry, which is also scientifically false. Um, and that is backed up with neurological studies and by just about every single expert in the field of addiction and neurology. Um, it, it does not, in fact, do that. So when we're talking about harm being done, what harm? In fact, I would say even compared to regular porn viewers, OnlyFans viewers do much more good because they're fairly compensating the sex workers that they of the content they watch um, on the sex workers terms. So when we're thinking about preventing exploitation, um, that would be a major benefit. So I'm, I'm excited for this conversation because um, there are so many uh, great things about porn and I can't wait to describe them and uh, have a, a lively debate. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening. And want to let you know, folks, before we kick it over to the yes side in particular, Andrew and Rachel will be arguing that, yes, OnlyFans consumers are causing harm. But first, want to let you know, we are absolutely stoked. Debate Con is becoming bigger and bigger by the moment. Melody Mack, go boom, on YouTube has agreed to come to Debate Con that Saturday, September 19th in Plano, Texas. You don't want to miss it. For example, 
a debate that is occurring there. Destiny and Matt Dillahunty collide on the bodily autonomy argument, as you can see at the bottom right of your screen. It's going to be huge. Click on that link in the description box for tickets if you're in the Texas area. And with that, we're going to kick it over to Andrew and Rachel. Thanks so much for being with us. The floor is all yours for your opening as well. You want me to go first? Or you want to go first? Sure. Why don't you? Why don't you start? Okay. Well, thanks for having us tonight, James. Appreciate it. I'd like to take a second to point out uh, that I listened today while I was working to Shark, who was reviewing various debates I had that weren't specifically on this topic, but they were pretty close. And I kind of found it amusing, as is typical, of course, he points to empirical evidence like most leftists do for any society-wide prescriptions, and those who use any metrics or epistemology he dismisses as, quote, baby brain. You see, from his viewpoint, conservatives are just plain stupid. I can't blame somebody suffering from left-wing indoctrination thinking these things, but you see, my problem with him is his justification process. You see, I like arguing with utilitarians a lot. They have a seemingly justified worldview, or at least some kind of epistemology and justification. Shark over here just wants us to grant that we should all start with empiricism and empirical data, and no justification is necessary, except that worldview, or of course, you're stupid. He also pointed out many times that intuitions aren't evidence of anything. That's just baby-brained after all. We need my data. But you see, to paraphrase and poorly impersonate a friend of mine, Omni, who's probably going to end up winning philosophy awards in his lifetime, and I think is a skilled utilitarian debater, well, what is there really other than intuition? After all, in sociology, that's all we're measuring. Take a stoplight study. They might ask hundreds of people if they associate red with stopping more than green. More people may respond red. So they make public policy based on their intuitions, never actually stopping to ask them why they do, because in that case, they don't need to. In fact, sociology is mostly just studying the intuitions of people and publishing the findings of their responses. Very rarely are their motivations for why they think a thing even taken into consideration, only that they do. This is true enough, of course. Our harm reductionist friends over here can't tell us why they want harm reduced other than their intuition tells them it's optimal. Nothing more. Then they search out empirical data to figure out the things people report as being harmful to them and want to base all public policy on that, dismissing all other metrics outright as being baby brained or my favorite feelings when that's literally what their sociological studies are mostly gauging. What we want out of them tonight are justifications. We want them to justify why we ought to even use their empirical data, even if all the data points to uh, just things you like. The ask is we just grant their worldview as being justified, which is totally absurd. Harm reduction is a subjective spectrum of nonsense, and it's not our primary edict. Now we will use their worldview as well to wreck them using their own empirical data standards. But just note that like all Twitch people, they just assume we ought to grant their worldview to even have an argument when really that's just us being totally benevolent and understanding that since everybody who is a Twitch poll scumbag argues inside the framework of harm reduction, that they just don't know any better. So this will be a Medata discussion, most likely with the false premise of we all want to reduce harm, some subjective category that they came up with. Likely the most amusing part of this statement is I doubt either party believes in objective truth, but we'll say we should uh, go for empirical data to get as close to the objective truth as we can. Uh, ignoring that irony, we will humor them with a single question or a series of questions anyway. Why is OnlyFans good for society? Why are simps good for society? Why is any of this good for society? The answer will be, well, it has some good things about it and some bad things about it. So do the good things outweigh the bad things without ever justifying at all why you should accept that even if the good metrics do outweigh the bad things, that you should accept that as being justified somehow. Even by that metric, though, the good things will not outweigh the bad things using their own data. And that's what I have. 
All right, my turn. Okay, so Andrew's right. Um, whenever you're arguing with, especially Twitch people or leftists in general, they want you to grant this uh, materialist worldview where the only acceptable form of epistemology is going to be empiricism, right? But unfortunately for them, I'm really shocked um, because I heard that one of the people on the panel thinks I'm not a real researcher because I'm not uh, doing these things in a university setting when I do research, even though that would eliminate like 95% of all books that have ever been written throughout history as being reliable research. Uh, if they took a look at the research, at the data, at the statistics that we do have, there, it's not on their side at all. I have tons. I mean, they give you some vague stuff like, well, I mean, but porn can be good. And like, generally we can correlate it with an overall reduction in some kind of uh, sexual crime, which is absurd, that you're going to end up arguing the same thing that uh, racists argue when they say, well, when we look at crime statistics, you know, we can prove that certain races are more violent or this or that. And it's like, yeah, but when you dig into the correlates, it's not really there like that direct correlation is not really there. It's the same thing with this. So we have data showing that this is harmful and both of our opponents are on that socialist communist economic side of things. So it shocks me that they would support OnlyFans when only the top 1% of accounts make 33% of all the money on OnlyFans and the top 10% of accounts make 73% of all the money. Uh, the average creator only brings home about $180 a month. It's it's really low. It's Most people cannot survive on it. They're supplementing income at best. The normal, like, universal law of distribution is like the 80-20 rule. OnlyFans is 80-14. It has less economic equality than South Africa, a former apartheid state. So, to argue that harm is not being done to the creators, I think is going to be really tough just based on that. But we also have, I don't know where Maddie got her statistics from, but I have studies right here that show again and again that researchers find neuroplasticity in the brain is deeply affected by viewing pornography, that human sexuality is highly plastic and malleable, especially with kids seeing porn for the first time at an average age of 11 years old now. Um, and then the other big dimension to this, uh, how we can prove that the simps purchasing this content are creating harm is a wonderful book called The Visibility Trap by Mary McGill. She's an Irish researcher, and she found that most of the creators on OnlyFans are experiencing leaks of their content in discords, forums online. Many of them have been stalked or tracked in person because their data gets leaked. OnlyFans is not super secure and safe. This idea that it's safer than sex work on the street has not held up over time now that we've got more data on how the site works. Um, there's been popular sex workers or OnlyFans girls on this channel who have quit because OnlyFans did not live up to the promise of safety, right, for them. So aside from that, we're also seeing marriage decline, birth rates decline, and we're seeing young men settle for parasocial relationships where they send a girl six dollars a month to look at her butthole and say that's you know it's easier than dating I'm just gonna settle for this so uh, <laughs> I'm interested to hear what they have as their justification or their proof because Andrew's going to kind of take the philosophical wing the, lo the logistics the logics of this debate and I'm going to present some of the empirical evidence because that's what they want so if you look at the actual empirical evidence, it's very hard for me to find any way that you could argue their point, but we'll see. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening as well. And before we jump into the open conversation, just a couple of other quick housekeeping type things. In particular, our guests are all linked in the description. I can tell this is going to be a good one tonight, folks. I'm very excited about it. But I've also got to show you this epic poster for our event that we just released. This is for DebateCon 2 in Plano, Texas on Saturday, November 19th. You don't want to miss it. If you are not in the Texas area, we're going to stream all of these debates live for the public for the channel as you can see for example at the top Aaron Ra will be taking on Muslim Daniel Hakikachu Matt Delonte will be debated be debating both Destiny as well as Muslim Kenny Bomer that day and then you can see 
some of the other stars. Although we have we have so many people, we can't even fit them on the poster. It's going to be amazing. So with that, we're going to jump into this open conversation. Thanks very much, Andrew, Rachel, Shark Zero Three Zero, and Maddie Cakes. The floor is all yours. So just really quickly, I want to say um, what I'm hearing from Rachel is that OnlyFans is bad because only the top 1% or like whatever percent make money from it. And I'm so thrilled to hear her say that because hearing you advocate for the redistribution of wealth um, for in a capitalist system and how um, capitalism and OnlyFans being like a microcosm of that um, is only leading to the top people making money um we stand a base queen so thank you for that yeah but i mean um, that's a problem it's a critique of your worldview though why don't you understand and I'm also, that? it's also curious that's a, critique, too. that's a critique of your worldview you're defending showing, it as i'm also, you defend it as I'm, a also I'm, I'm saying it's concerned. Concerned. no no wait one wait, thing I have because that's a data point because that's a data point too i have to and it's correct interesting. you though because you misinterpreted the data point hmm. you said that no you misinterpreted the data it is not representative. I thought you don't care about data. It's you care about data. So but I don't think, but I why does data. it, but you are right. saying that data doesn't matter. I have to do this, but I have to mute everybody just to restore order so this doesn't go off the, off the tracks right away. So just a moment. I want to give you a chance to respond, Maddie. So I want to give Maddie plenty of time because that was a good chonky statement from you, Andrew and Rachel. And then I promise we'll come right back to you, Rachel. Thank you very much. Oh, you're, okay. There you go. Yeah, no, I, I got you. Um, yeah, so I mean that that was just a, that was just an interesting tidbit. Also, it's interesting that you're using data as the crux of your argument because quote we believe in data. But if you didn't believe in data or believe that it had any um, value in terms of putting a point forward, then you're kind of just arguing against yourself because you're having to use our assumption and foundation as the jumping ground for your entire point of view, and that just feels uh, a little weird. A little bizarre. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll toss it over because I know Shark also has lots of things he wants to say. But um, it's just interesting when you uh, dec like talk down data and how data doesn't matter. Um, but intuition, on the other hand, a.k.a. feels, is the real indicator of truth. Um, but it's only your feels, right? It's it's no one. It's not other people's feels. So what what a fascinating turn of events for the conservative wing of Twitch. Um, feelings over facts. You gotta love them for being upfront about it and going mask off. Let me be sure. Shark, I think you were handing it over to Shark, but at the same time, I wasn't sure because. Uh, Rachel, if you want to respond, we'll give you a chance. Go ahead. Yeah. So first of all, this is why it's so hard to debate women because you get a lot of, oh, I guess. Oh, wow. Interesting. It's like, can you just be a little bit more adult about it and present your points without all the snarky snipiness? It's like, just stop with that crap. But Maddie completely misinterpreted everything we said. We did not say that empiricism did not matter or that data did not matter. We said it's not the only thing that matters. Empiricism is not the only way to determine truth. She also needs to learn ways. what an uh, internal critique is, she, right? But that's, yeah. But what I'm saying is we can present different proofs. So Andrew can perform a philosophical argument. I can give you empirical data that refutes yours. We can do both. And it's not a microcosm of capitalism. I just got done telling you that it's actually far more exploitative than capitalist systems, even the worst ones we have. OnlyFans is far more exploitative than the average capitalist system. So nice try, but next time listen and try to understand what you're hearing. Sure. Um, oh, can I go? Yep. Sure, okay. So a couple of things. Um, for one, when it comes to OnlyFans, uh, it's for one, you can't just take the full metric of OnlyFans and how many and what percentage of the top one percent are the are the ones getting all of the money because it's not very relevant because a lot of OnlyFans is not porn at all. Uh, a lot of only for like the original marketing of OnlyFans is for just celebrities. And there are a bunch of celebrities on there that pay basically as just like a mini Twitter. Why would honestly. that matter? Why would I mean, who cares what the industry is? 
your because we're your saying pers- only fans customers well, wait, that your, includes non-porn still, customers. From, still, from your perspective, any any industry where the top one percent of the earners should be we're talking. No, that's my perspective. I didn't, I didn't, not I didn't, his. I didn't, I didn't say that. I, I never said that. I think all systems are always going to be some unequal to some degree. That's just kind of like how the world works. So we can try to mitigate it as much as we can, but it's always going to be unequal. That's just kind of how it works. Some people are just going to simply be more popular than others. That's just, it, it just happens. That's okay. That's fine. Um, but but when it comes to that, I'm sorry, like Bella Thorne or um, any, any, I don't know, very many rich people. John Cena is probably going to get more OnlyFans subscribers than like Sarah who works at Target. Okay, that's fine. Also, I don't know what's wrong with supplementing your income, simply. I think supplementing your income is actually pretty great. You being able to pick up more hobbies, you being able to possibly even um, quit a job and have a little bit of money built up to go do something else um, uh, in the quit, have like a little, that like three, six month window where you have income built up and go do something else is actually pretty cool. I think that's a great thing for people to be able to do. And they don't even have to post like, hardcore porn to be able to get there. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. I do think that there needs to be more parody and I do think that there needs to, OnlyFans does need to do more work. Also, you mentioned things like safety uh, in OnlyFans. The customers don't control OnlyFans TOS. Like on, on Twitch, like I, I could imagine, like if some, I mean, let, let's say, let's just even talk about like Twitter. Like, is, is is like using Twitter or something bad now because because like Elon Musk can have complete access to everybody's DMs and basically do whatever he wants now. Elon Musk literally via TOS, he literally owns everybody's DMs. You listen, you better, you better. You're arguing that stuff, a buddy. straw man. I didn't say that. Well, go ahead and explain. No, one, one second. No, I just want to. What I in. said was, Rachel, I, I hate doing this to you again. <laughs> I just sure. want to redirect, so it'll give you a chance to say exactly what you're going to say, Rachel. But then I do want to be sure that we return to the the consumers of OnlyFans. Cause rather than talking too yes. much about so many of the girls or guys, whoever's on OnlyFans, that only make like $8 a month or whatever. But So just to bring it back right after your comment, Rachel. Right. So what I the reason I brought up that data was to show that for people who want equality and equity in the world... Um, For them to be sitting here defending a highly unequal and unequitable platform where people's personal data is leaked. I wasn't talking about TOS. I was talking about the fact that the simps or the users of the platform provide this huge market of demand that most people don't really profit much from. But at the same time, it's presented as safer than traditional sex work, which has not necessarily proven to be true. And there have been massive data leaks. People can take screenshots. People can screen record your content, post it anywhere. It, you never get that back. You can't put the shit back in the horse. So um, it's a highly exploitative system. It's marketed to the youngest, most vulnerable, most desperate girls as something that's safe when it's not. So for people who build their entire online persona around wanting equity and safety and you know a good life for everyone, for them to defend this is indefensible. Before we go any further on, in particular, the models of OnlyFans, one person actually did ask a question in the live chat that is pertinent. Deej says, can we agree on what the defini- definition of harm is by these consumers? So in what way are they harming whether it be the models or themselves or somebody else. We can't agree to a definition of harm. For the, for them, likely the definition of harm is something like suffering. So you're saying it's, but what do you, how do you measure that then? What's your metric I mean, I and know how what do you, you draw the direct line? I mean, I want to know what you value. You both like consider yourselves Christians. I want to, I want to know what you like value in this situation. I would, I would, I'd wait, or a Catholic? Is that, is that correct? Or Orthodox. Orthodox. So yeah, like in, in this situation, what do you value? What do you call harm? I guess from a secular perspective, because I don't feel like any of us need to be. In it's a very, it's very simple. Anything that steps outside of Christian ethics, which is a mix of deontological and virtue ethics. So everything that's outside the Bible of. Bible mentions Okay, things. so one more time before you cut in, Maddie, since you asked me a direct question, I'd like to answer it. What was asked is how do we decide what's harmful or in other words, what's bad? We know what's bad because if it steps outside of our ethical system, it's bad. If it's within the framework of that ethical system, it's good. Same as yours, right? You you focus on some type of utilitarian purview, I'm guessing. So anything that increases harm is bad. And anything that decreases harm is good. Okay, that's good. Is, is there to literally... Harm, wait, 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 Maddie. Sorry, I already sorry, defined I it. I already, to, sorry, I already told right. you what we consider harm to be. 
Okay. Is there literally anything else to it? No, there, and there's nothing else to it for your system either. Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking when, and when I'm when just I, telling think, you, okay. When I think about harm, I'm, I'm, just, I'm talking about, you know, yeah, you're right. Like suffering, yes, somebody I know, getting I know, hurt, I know. something bad happening <laughs> to them. Um, I'm and, aware. Okay, I just, I just want to know if there's any way I could possibly reach you in any way, shape or form. Um, in this, in this discussion, well, we, this is the problem. Well, this is the problem. When we have a discussion like this, we have to grant your worldview in order to have the argument because you so don't are, under, you gonna, are you going to do this because you don't understand are you is that view. what you're doing one more time let me finish you don't actually understand our worldview right you have no conceptualization of the ontological ethics or virtue ethics but we understand utilitarianism inside but now. you understand so ours. we have to so we have to grant your worldview we have oh. no choice because you can't understand anything okay. outside of that oh okay. got it well well i mean thanks for letting me in um Anyways, uh, well, well anyways, okay, you Maddie, start- Maddie, hang on, hang on. Since Maddie's being snarky, is harm Matt, when not Maddie, is harm can you, when not Christian? Hey, hey, Maddie, snark can you is tell, her personality. Yeah, hey, Maddie, That's can you true. tell me since since oh, you know, you don't, you guys just don't. We're not smart enough to understand your worldview, Maddie. What is our worldview? I've literally never said that. First of all, I yeah, what's our worldview, said, Maddie? I've never even commented on your intelligence, which is what's so our worldview. I've never, I've never claimed to understand your worldview. Well, right. So, sir. so then I was right. But I'm also and you not just sit so. There. But I'm also not just so. There, um, just I'm also there. not so up my own asshole that I proclaim to know anyone else's worldview. Well, that's because you're not smart enough to be. No, smug. it's because I'm not up my. You're own You're not asshole. smart enough to be. Smug. It's because I'm not up my own asshole. No, you're just not smart Maddie, enough. Maddie, no. do you think we haven't but, debated you? Utilitarian mm. ethics like 50,000 times by now. This is what we do. We know that's, that that's, utilitarian. Sure, that's good, but with all of this, I actually don't care. So you all yeah, said that like, you had you you all said that you all had information to prove that it is harmful in in our worldview. You know, yeah. in the real world, it causes real world harm to oh, human wait, beings. No, our worldview is the real world as well. Okay, sure. my, my bad. That was wrong, wrong turn of phrase. I'll take it back. In our way that we view the world, you said that you have information to prove or to show or to correlate that there is harm that we would recognize as harm. Can you tell me what that is? And we can talk about it one by one. You mean you you want us to go through a listing of everything that we think you would consider to be harm and then weigh no, it I'm, and then we're going to no, weigh that against no. the good points, just like I said you wanted to do? <laughs> well, oh. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. I mean, listen. I just we just want to I just want to talk about if it's like true or not that that harm does exist or that uh, that conceptualization of harm does exist. Right. Because if because if I think like stepping on my dog's tail is harm and you think like not taking your dog to the park is harm. Right. Like some something along those lines. Um, it, well, it, then you it, run it, in, then the you run into a lot of uh, uh, epistemology issues with that. Right. Okay. So this is this is the whole problem with this. But. Don't worry, we're we will go into your studies and your Medata and we'll we'll go through this to make you happy, right? I'm just saying that you have no moral grounding, no moral foundation. You have absolutely nothing from which to even bring an argument, right? You don't even understand the conceptualization where we come from or what we mean when we say virtues and what we mean when we say that we follow a completely different ethical system than yours, which is just as valid, but you only want to use these metrics because you live inside of an echo chamber where that's what everybody does. Okay, bud. I mean, you don't know my life at all, but uh, thank you for trying to. I'm talking you know, about listen, Twitch if I, politics. Listen, buddy. If I if uh, if I need somebody listen, to help write buddy. my biography, look here, buddy. I'll, I'll Hush. To, listen here, to, pal. Rachel. I have to hire you. Um, <laughs> listen, racial. I mean, I don't like to use a lot of uh, uh, words lab coats came up with to try to figure out how the world works. When when you, I guess, got mad at what I was talking about and when I guess I called you baby brain, what I was talking about is not simply using intuition as a part of how you figure out something. We all use some we all we all start from somewhere. We Thank all you. feel something and then we figure out. And then I would imagine that after that, we would like to figure out what's actually true or not by like trying to test it out in the real world. Does our yeah. intuition. But does, does with, like, do most world? of the sociological studies in which you want to go over today? Measure, are they measurements of intuition? How do you define of, intuition? Like, so, are you just defining it as feeling? So if somebody or, asks you, you could so, that so, to Maddie, so Maddie, broadly. I'll help. I'll help Maddie. So, Maddie, Wonderful. if somebody says, do you think that this is good or bad? And they ask you for no justification and you say it's bad. That's your intuition. But how so anytime you make any sort of judgment call on whether something is good or bad, all of that 
is intuition. Yes, if that, And if that changes <laughs> based on right. the data. So well, that's interesting because a lot of times <laughs> we de- define or like we make those decisions based on other inputs, right? Because are you only making no, those decisions no, based no, on? Yes, you do. In fact, most yes, of time, you do. Most of the time in sociology. Like, you know how we know that lead most, paint is bad? What? Because we had data okay. to suggest that okay. it was causing harm. And and so when you ask a person, that? it wasn't intuition. So it when you ask, okay. It. So Maddie, I'm going to try to help you out here. So if you ask a person, oh my God, thank you so much. who ate lead paint, okay, point to the spot where it hurts. They go, oh, it hurts right here. They don't ask them if they have a foundation for why it hurts. They don't ask them why they have the belief that it hurts. They just point and say, oh, it hurts. And so is that the little how guy, you think they discovered? So the little, so the little guy on his little clipboard <laughs> says. Paint. He says it thing hurts. And this is how they do that type of data collection. Same thing with most sociological that's how studies. You thi- that's how most, you think they discovered mo- that lead was no, poisonous? No, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> what I'm trying to point out to you is that most sociological studies are measuring people's intuitions. They're not asking for their motivations, rather seeing how they react, not the motivations behind why they stop necessarily at the red light. It's more important to them to know that they do. Most people don't uh, give just. They absolutely just, ask Most people don't give justifications. <laughs> most people. Okay. Well, here, Maddie. Let, let me give you a, a great example of this. Uh, can you justify for me why you go to work? Why I go to work? Yeah. So you want me to give you the the rationale? Um, I mean, there's a no, 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 reasons. not the rationale. What's Yo, the can justification? Can we can we please stop this? Like this seems I'm, so I'm dumb. Begging. Yeah. Like this is really like this has nothing I'm to begging. do with OnlyFans customer. Right. So so again, <laughs> grant grant our worldview. And then if we if we decide to go into why we think your worldview is wrong, the first thing you do is pivot and go, we don't want to talk about that. Please talk about empirics. Please talk about empirics. For the love of God, talk about empirics. It's all we know, but you won't actually well, get into your own worldviews. No, so here's, okay, so wait, here's, wait, here's when, the thing. Like you 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 got on me for for being like, oh, thinking, thinking bad and like the whole baby brain thing. All I was saying is that just like using just simply just intuition when you come to uh, conclusions in the world can sometimes lead you to pretty bad decisions. Well, um, if can, I, can if I can, like I that. think I can but, help sort this out a little bit and move it along. Sure. So, I, I, I guess I, I really wanted to talk about what, what you brought up when it came yeah. to like the, the hierarchy in the, cause I don't think we finished that. I think we got derailed. Right. So but but what can, Andrew is saying, what Andrew is saying is that you guys want to, a granted worldview where everything is figured out empirically. Whereas we would say that doesn't tell you, you can't get an ought from an is. I say I'm that? sure you guys have heard that, right? You've heard the phrase, you can't get an yep. ought from an is. The is yep. ought, yeah. so we mm-hmm. could present a bunch of data and we could say, well, why does, how does this data tell us what we ought do? And you guys would say harm. And we would say the logical extension of that argument is why not put everybody in a vat hook them up to pleasure sensors, give them opiates, give them, you know, scientifically using whatever technology we have, just put everybody in a vat and give them permanent pleasure, right? Just nothing has meaning, nothing has value. There's no virtues. There's no morals. We just feel pleasure and there's no harm, right? Why not do that under your worldview? Therefore, we dismiss this type of worldview because it doesn't take into account why we ought to do anything. And this is essentially a moral claim we're making, whether this is a good or bad, harmful or not, right? So we can go over the empirics, but what Andy is saying is even granted that, it doesn't tell us what we ought do in the world. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep, that's yep, that's perfectly fine. Um, yep, this I I, I could I, I just okay. Let's let, let's just go back to what we were talking. You sound about very because, flustered. Calm down. Well, I was thinking about responding to the whole why don't we put down. people in a vat thing, but I didn't want to get derailed again, so I just wanted to. So that, that I was thinking. Um, my brain runs faster than my mouth. It's a it's a part of the ADHD. Um, mm. But the whole like height hierarchy thing i mean i just there what, there, there's what always hierarchy going, thing i'm not sure what you're referring to oh when you were talking about like how only some people actually make a living wage um but that's like also leaving out how many people are actually trying to make a living wage or how many people actually need to make a living wage off of only fans right did you ever th- maybe you know, but that? couldn't we apply that to the entire economy as a whole and then all the socialist and communist economics gets thrown out the window i mean can't we just say that about well maybe the person's only making minimum wage at mcdonald's because they're not really trying and maybe they don't need to make a good living i mean can't we apply that to your whole worldview and then just wipe it out 
It's fascinating. Sorry. It's just fascinating that like the conversation tends to steer towards trying to discredit like a worldview or that, but they are avoiding talking about only fans, customers as a whole. You seem to be circumventing what this actual debate's supposed to be about because I don't think you have a real uh I don't think you foundation know what a debate of is. an argument. You don't yeah, know you're right. I have is. no idea what a debate is. No, I have no idea what I'm don't. doing here. Who am I'm I? I'm supposed to question your grounding. Am I supposed um, to question your grounding? But it's in it's the interesting that you do that while completely skirting the points that we're making we're not skirting about them. the value of un, being we're an OnlyFans. We're not customer. skirting them, but it's just the, it's just very interesting. Maddie, I presented Maddie, what's, a ton Maddie, of data. Hang on, what's the debate topic, Maddie? What's the debate topic? Are you like okay? First of all, don't fucking condescending me. Second of all, like I can't, make an I can't, argument I can't, I can't help myself. It. What's the debate? You can't topic? help yourself. I can't. Uh, are what's you saying you have a compulsion? Disorder? I do. I do. I have right, to. Did you just please. tell him not I to have, be condescending? I have That's to, funny. I, I have to treat thoughts a certain way. So again, if you'd help me out here, Maddie, can you tell me what's the debate topic? The debate topic is: Do OnlyFans customers create harm? Right. And so, what's harm? What's harm? Yeah. Well, that's sort of what we were discussing earlier. We were so trying to come to is. a foundation. Right. What do you mean? By any no, I'm I'm saying okay. Well, there's look and there's many types of harm. I'm sorry, harm is when not Christian apparently. Is that well, correct? Well, well, wait, wait. Well, I mean, yes. Is that correct? But, but that aside, while that may be a so harm is not Christian. Believe, let me. I'm let guessing me just you've never you thrown a pigskin. Uh, let me just around, let me right? just let me just ask you again. Christianity just, does just, love just that. real quick because because this is really important. If we don't agree with your definition of harm, which you haven't given yet. How can we even proceed into having a debate, Maddie? Well, it's interesting because I'm the one arguing that it's not causing harm. So you're kind of asking me to prove a negative. Whereas with you, if you if you are saying that it is harmful, then Maddie, the onus is on you to define what harm. harm is. And we told you you're asking me what the definition of harm yes. is. Okay, there yeah. needs to be there's there's a number of metrics that there's harm based on let's say psychological, right? Where we're talking about like, okay, it's um, if you're making the argument that it's leading to um, addiction issues and that that, see, that that specifically because they are um, subscribed to OnlyFans and that is what is driving the um, addiction, whatever, then These that would be a metric. That would be a metric with which you could measure harm. Yeah, well, what's the definition of harm, though, so that we know what we're measuring? Do you want me to link you the dictionary? Do you not have Google? I just want you town? to tell me so that we know what we're operating. You're ignorant, Maddie. Knows you no asked bounds. for a definition of harm at the beginning. You said, "Can we please define what harm is?" You <laughs> asked for the definition of harm, and now you're like, "And I've learned that harm means harm means when not Jesus. Harm means when not Jesus. And thank you." Okay. A, well, we I can, can tell you. You must have gotten that definition from your very extensive research. Well, wait. If, so now you. you don't wait. want to define harm. No, 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 it's fine. If if okay. she you defines want... harm as not being Jesus, then we have won the debate. Yeah, because Jesus That's loves true. you guys. Um, okay, <laughs> so 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 with all this, I think Ooh. um I I think we we can come to like a from. I think we can come at it like this. Like generally, I think your average person would understand harm to be something along the lines of damage, injury to uh, not being able to do something that you wanted to or something out of your control that impedes something that you were uh, looking to do. Typically is how people would consider that to be harm, um, pain, um, suffering could also be under that definition. So obviously you could harm somebody by making them feel distress, emotional distress. You could harm somebody by shooting them. You could harm people by in many different ways. Good, so this is, good. This would be I'm like glad that harm. you finally defined harm because now, based on what you just said, I want to ask. You do seem glad. Are you, are you in favor of a lot of the measures that were taken during the global events of the last couple of years, which a lot of people thought were for causing them suffering, distress, um, preventing them from doing things they wanted to do like leave the house go to work run their i would business, say the people that died uh, from practice COVID probably bodily felt autonomy more and choose what things go into their body and what things don't so if you define harm that way then are you like a pure anarchist or a libertarian like a really strong libertarian because you don't want these restrictions I would say the people that died from covid probably uh would feel differently about if we totaled up well, how like, do you know the harm dead? done 
That's a very good argument, Andrew. Thank you. (laughs) No, and we can then say, okay, so you are saying that sometimes it's worth it to restrict certain behaviors and make policy decisions that restrict certain behaviors if we can prove that they are harmful under the what Chris just said. Is your correlation a, a deadly virus to OnlyFans? No, I'm saying, are you in favor of preventing people from doing certain things and taking away certain liberties, enforcing certain behaviors and restricting others under the guise of preventing harm? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. When the harm is tangible and like definable, and in the case of a global pandemic, a once in a lifetime pandemic, yeah, I would say that uh, succinctly falls under that category. Right. So all of the stuff I listed in the beginning, um, not sure if Maddie heard what I said, but I think Chris heard what I said, where we're talking about how, uh, you know, women are joining OnlyFans at a very young age. A lot of them start the people who do the sex work. They're very young. The median age, I think, was like 21.2 years old. It's really young. And the average, yeah, the average consumer of that content is like 35. So we have this market of older men and this uh, creators being these really young, vulnerable girls who haven't built life skills, who haven't built any sort of safety nets for themselves. They may not have gotten married. They don't have an education or a career. They're doing this not because it's been their dream to make $180 online every month, showing everyone their bits and pieces, but usually because they need the money, right? So would we say that this is exploitative of those people? Because normally I feel like guy, you guys would want to protect those people, wouldn't you? No one's forcing them to uh, go to OnlyFans, just like no one's forcing someone to drive for Uber, just like some, no one's forcing someone to take any job. Um, so I would say if they're of consenting age and they're making that informed decision for themselves to um, like do whatever they want to do on OnlyFans, no, I don't have a problem with that. Would you say the same okay, so thing about heroin? Wanna, just before we go further with this, I do want to redirect this just because we've talked so much about the content creators of OnlyFans. In terms of the potential harm caused by the consumers. We're there so right they, now. That's what, right I'm, now. that's what I'm talking about. So, so thing, when we're is... talking about so the, the addiction aspect for the consumer, would you say the same exact thing for heroin? Um, for what? Can you restate? I just want to make sure. Yeah, what so do you mean? Before, if they're informed before, adults, right, they if they're can informed do heroin. adults and they've consented to do heroin, it's cool, right? Oh, what, what do you mean by cool? Do, do, I mean, do you mean like yeah. I should it throw them in jail? Legally you're permitted. fine with it. Yeah, I think it should be legally permitted, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think you should like throw somebody in jail for using heroin, no. So, what and if we should have a market for it? Addiction. We should have a market for should... that, just like OnlyFans? Have a have a market for heroin? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, when when it comes to heroin, I feel like it's so fundamentally different in other like substances that people take. They're fundamentally different than a lot of other things, like even possibly gambling, um, porn as well. Uh, that we should that they should be legal, but I think they should be restricted. And I think they should uh, uh, come with uh, clear markets from people who are the companies who are the ones like providing the platform for that to tell people what they're getting into and they should be held legally responsible for that. Okay, so just to back this up, I want to make sure I get this right. Sure. Uh, Heroin, you think that heroin use, there should be a market for it. Is that correct? No. No, No. you didn't say you didn't just say that there should be. No. No, there saying, should not be a saying market that you're not for gonna... heroin, but if we're speaking about the customers or the people who have heroin or heroin doers, mm-hmm. they should not be held like they, they should not be the, the state should not like come in and like. Fuck so if there up. was no OnlyFans, there would be no simps to get addicted to pornography on OnlyFans. Right, Chris? No, he's um, saying that you don't need to criminalize. Yeah, like, I know what he said. Criminalizing something. Just heard it. OK, no, that, here. Um. Uh, sure. If there was no OnlyFans, there wouldn't be anybody on OnlyFans. That's true. Right. So you wouldn't create a market for heroin because of that addiction. Mm-hmm. Why would yep. you create a market for people to become addicted to OnlyFans? Well, it's not. Well, for one, it's not as addictive or anywhere near addictive. And honestly, the jury is out. Oh, if it's wait, wait. How do you it's know? It's true, um, though. Should we not have a market for sugar? Yeah. So, so how do you know? How do you know? Or it's like, not should we not have a market? You, well, wait. For how do you know if it's not as addictive, Chris? Let's ban. No, it's not addictive. Um, it's common sense. 
Oh, it's com- it's common sense. It's, it's common addictive. sense. It's his intuition. It's common sense. Anybody it's knows his, It's his intuition. So mm-hmm. I, I yep. did notice when I had watched uh, your your kind of revamp of me earlier that you were going to use the argument of intuition. But, you know, you have to use intuition with foundation. You don't understand mm-hmm. what intuition is. Sure. So what's the foundation for your intuition or do you have one? Just say uh, no. My, my Just foundation, say no. My, okay, I was raised foundation. Catholic, so... Uh, my foundation for this intuition is uh-huh. specifically that porn and viewing something is fundamentally different when we're talking about grown adults than taking a substance. It does different things to your brain because you're not putting something literally in your body. But it is well, addictive. Unfortunately for you, I have to refute that because you are okay, incorrect buddy. according to the science that you guys want to follow. There's a wonderful website called yourbrainonporn.com, which has a ton of citations of studies. That sounds books. unbiased. No, it's well, it may be, but they're they're peer reviewed studies. Do you have any they're well cited books. Wait, these are peer I thought you don't care about studies. Data. These are well cited books. Okay. Do I? So you guys want to hear this or no? Are we just gonna I do. okay? So he does. This is a book that was written by an expert on neurology and neuroplasticity. Uh, his name is Norman Doidge. You guys might even have heard of him. I've heard of him before. Um, he has a book called The Brain That Changes Itself. And he did a ton of uh, research and looking at the metadata for pornography. And he said, the content of pornography is a dynamic phenomenon that perfectly illustrates the progress of an acquired taste. 30 years ago, hardcore pornography usually meant the explicit depiction of intercourse between two partners and, you know, looking at genitals and whatnot, right? And then softcore stuff was softcore stuff. But now you can get this everywhere with high-speed internet. There's sites all over the internet that don't check your age. You don't have to in any way prove that you're an adult who knows what you're consuming. But even among adults who consume it, they know that the brain is highly neuroplastic when it comes to sexuality. And in my book, I... I did some research on a guy who, this was a horrible person, an MK ultra doctor who put uh, electrodes in people's brains and tried to convert them from being gay. And unfortunately he was successful. So he would provide heterosexual stimulus and then zap certain parts of the brain, completely rewired what these people's tastes were. But you don't have to implant electrodes. We can see the effects now with people um, who have porn addictions. They start with a little bit of viewership with something pretty normal over time that stimulus doesn't do the same thing so they get on to worse things crazier things um different fetishes and things like that and before you know it um they're incapable of having a normal sexual experience with another person without this stimulus and 10 percent of all adults in the united states say that they have had a porn addiction that has significantly affected their life so we do know that this is a problem people struggle with and that it does affect them. And we have studies and we have books and we have empirical evidence from 10% of the population who says this crippled them. So what do you guys say to that? Sure. Um, Here's, here's, here's the, here's the amazing thing, right? Because simply because you say something happened does not mean it actually did. So when, when we, when, when researchers have actually looked into porn and brilliant, Brilliant Hush. reputation. Let him finish. Hush, let him finish. Thank you. Because that was literally all that I was saying. You got me. And would you like to respond to that? Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah, respond to what? Because, you haven't said anything. Yeah. That's why I was surprised you started speaking. Well, you made a decorative statement that was obviously incorrect. We were fascinated that you were started speaking. You no, know, it's just. Well, no, I want to hear him refute. So hear I want rest. to hear his evidence. I want to hear him refute my evidence. Go ahead, Chart. Sure. When when researchers have looked into porn and what they seem to and what they would like to see is what what they would look into, which would be like porn addiction. Um, they found out a bunch of really interesting things. Um, one thing was that they were not able to find that people's brains and people who specifically called themselves problematic porn users uh, to be uh, to react differently uh, to erotic stimuli. Uh, compared to the general population and people who typically just watch who watch porn even uh, semi frequently, uh, they weren't able to find that. They weren't able to find uh, things that uh, like markers that would say that this person is actually addicted. 
they weren't able to find any uh, causative links between the porn that they were watching or any porn that they would be consuming whatsoever in grown adults um, uh, to changes in their brain structure or uh, brain responses to erotic stimuli uh, at all. What they were able to find is that people who tend to have compulsive habitual disorders um, can gravitate to many different things. Um, I, there's no, uh, it seems like there's no real difference between somebody who seems to, uh, who, who sees that has a problem like getting to work or it's impairing their life or, or they claim that they have like a uh, porn actually like harmed them in some way. It seems like this person could have easily gotten onto like, uh, 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 they, they could have easily gotten onto an, another uh, vice and that compulsive, that compulsivity of them makes them no different than like somebody who walks into a room and has to flip the light switch on uh, and off three times or something along those lines. It's not the porn that actually did this to them. What? So wait, so you're saying that Go if ahead. the porn wasn't there, they would have just been addicted to something else. Uh, yes. And something that would yeah. be worse. Okay. And what, what, what do you think uh, would be worse? The flicking the light switch on three times or the uh, fact that your heart, Depends. your, your brain has been slowly hardwired to watch progressively more and more hardcore pornography. Uh, that's just not true. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, well, but, I'm, I mean, I'm is looking true. at another it's study right here that directly contradicts true. everything you just said. It says that um, the mm. people who organized this 2018 study found that porn scenes, like addictive substances, are hyper-stimulating triggers that lead to unnaturally high levels of dopamine secretion. This can damage the dopamine reward system and leave it unresponsive to natural sources of pleasure. This is why users begin experiencing difficulty in achieving arousal with a physical partner. And then it goes on to show other measurements that they found in the brain with scans um, and other behavioral issues that they found in the people they studied. So I guess we, I mean, I can tell you the name. I could drop my links in the chat and we could go over them. But it seems like I'm finding stuff that directly contradicts what you're saying. Well, that's crazy. I'm finding stuff that can uh, directly contradicts what you're saying. It's almost like you can... Almost find whatever you want out there. Oh my god! Is, is it, so there is, is no like empirical that? truth. So there yeah. is no way so, to use data to find the truth of what's is, going on here. This is wild for you to jump from there. You can find information that supports you to there is no empirical truth in the world. You said that's it sounds saying, like we can you find don't whatever seem... we want out there. You're the that's one that's yeah, that's true. Your statement. It. It's true. Yeah. You by the way, by the way, uh, help me out here. Then, if we can't settle this because you're just going to reject our data and, and yield to yours, though you haven't even seen ours. Let me just ask you. Well, you, you, well, you didn't see mine, so. <laughs> send yeah, it. Well, she we just could, asked we you multiple times. We would love if you could. No, she asked if she could send hers. Yeah, so we'll send ours. Yeah. Okay. But also, while you're doing oh, you that, can you answer to the question of why you think ought simp? What? Why do you think men He's saying simp? why is it good? Like, why like advocate for, for why it's helpful. Simp? You could I just never say said that. It was good. It's not good. So what is no, it? I, I, I don't know. It's, it seems neutral. Neutral. Okay. Yeah, so what? Whatever. So yeah. what does the threshold need to be to get over neutrality? Fifty-one percent bad to forty-nine percent good. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, no. I don't know how. I don't, don't know, know how. You, I don't know how you measure like th that. It, honestly, you, you, you don't know. Doing... You don't know how you measure what's good or bad in your own worldview. Um, you remember I don't it's know intuition. How you measure, it's Jesus. I don't, I don't know how you measure like a social interaction by specific units to figure out what's 51 and what's 49 now. I mean like utils? Sure. Yeah. That's a sure. made so, up. So what do you unit. so what do you you think utils are made of? <laughs> I have a I master's in economics. But anyway, uh, I have a master's for, in economics, so well, you, yeah. Well, go for they that. They use PA. different metrics. They use different sliding scales and metrics to um, estimate utility. And usually that utility metric is based on um, aggregate a number of different um, inputs because they're trying to yeah, evaluate we're overall about, wellness. We're talking about utils so, in the abstract, right? So utils in this case would be something well, that if, X, if, if you have X amount of utils, if you have 51 utils and 49 things that are not utils, and you would go with the 51% of utility. So if you can't- Thank you for clearing that up. If you can't describe for us in any way why you at what in what empirical dividing line would there be for you to change your mind? What, what would question. it take? In general, do you like in general, do you think porn should be outlawed entirely? Yeah. 
interesting. Why is that you interesting? Think no matter what, because it's just it just shows your own bias on this and how like you are starting yes, from the I'm foundation. You start from the foundation that porn is inherently bad, is inherently amoral, but that's only within your personal moral framework. That's not within the larger framework that we work around because there are plenty of things that happen what, what in day to day life. Framework do you think there's we're there's plenty with? of things. Let me finish, and maybe you'll be illuminated. Um, like there's plenty of things that happen or that are legal that aren't necessarily going to align with your moral framework. That's true. Like that, that but they're and not illegal. And so like, for example, alcohol, should alcohol be outlawed? No. Why? Uh, well, it depends. What do you mean by outlawed? As in nobody could ever should, have any should the, ever should the consumption and production of, of alcohol be banned? No. Why? Because clearly people are able to, uh, responsibly drink and God says it's okay. So they're responsibly drink, but there are um, tons of uh, yeah, but, drunk driving accidents and says, people have died God and people have died okay. from drunk driving. And then people yeah. have also died from liver failure yeah. because they become okay. addicted to it. Mm -hmm. So um, why? But God says so, it's okay. So the only, your only rationale then, your entire rationale for why it should be legal is because it's specifically mentioned in the Bible. Not all alcohol, mind you, just wine. Why? So well, wait a second. That, wait a second. Is, why, that is why all, it should be all, that's the first permitted. First, it, right? first, first and foremost, you're wrong about only wine being mentioned. That's one. Two. What else is mentioned? Whatever. Substantiate whatever, that. Whatever I decide to base my moral system mentioned? on, even if the entirety of it is based. Did Jesus do Jaeger shots? Literally around what I think God says is okay. I knew Jesus It doesn't party. matter. It's a fine grounding. What Now, when I ask you, you ask me, why should alcohol stay legal? Well, God says it's okay as long as you're not a drunkard. OK, so we can say that that's legal. Now, why do you think that simping is a good thing? Why do you think that, Didn't that God also good? say that you should like love? I thy answered neighbor. your question. Answer mine. <laughs> should God does not also because God has said a lot of things. Well, I'm curious because you said your first point was that other alcohol was mentioned in the Bible. What other alcohol is mentioned? Who, Maddie, it's totally She's beside the point. avoiding justifying. Are you not? Anything. You're not. So you're not going to justify that. You need to justify. But, but like I you're, you're basing your entire moral framework. Mm -hmm. What have you got, Maddie? What have you got? Yeah, I was saying. I was saying. If you're going to base your entire entire moral framework mm -hmm. on one book, on the Bible, on Christianity, then I, and then when and you're then saying like, listen, I'm still. I'm not. I'm not done. Like if you're going to do that and then so I make a point saying, OK, well, you within your personal within your personal moral framework, mm -hmm. should alcohol be illegal? And you say no, because no. it's in the Bible. And I say no, but only a specific kind of alcohol is available in the Bible. No, I didn't so say should it's because, vodka, should I didn't vodka say it was because be illegal? it's in the Bible. They never said it was in the Bible. It's because it was in the Bible. So. But you did say that. No, you said, I said because, it's because it's you said it's because so, it's mentioned so we, in the Bible and God no, likes no, no, it. No, no, and how would you know if God likes it unless it's in the Bible. Bible? You brought up the Bible. How we else would you know I'm if God tell likes you, something? But you have to stop speaking. Or is as he speak to you? Whenever whenever you decide that you're going to stop speaking. Where'd I know that go that's got to be hard for you, but go ahead, we're going to I'll try. We have a church tradition which is 2000 years old. And we adhere to that church tradition. You might Based know this on. if you knew anything about orthodoxy. Based on. The church tradition is not based on the Bible. The church wrote the Bible. No. They did. They did. They, they did. The Bible is just the Bible incidental. For the first 300 and some years of Christianity. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just the Bible's Bible is just incidental. No. It's just it's like a fun how-to guide. Maddie. It's very important, but it is not what orthodox Christianity is. That's a Protestant thing. It's only 500 years old. So roll your eyes and giggle, but you don't I'm know. I'm not what you're Protestant, about. though. I'm so are Catholic. you going to justify your worldview? Well, then you should already know this, Maddie. Maybe stop putting on lipstick long enough to make a point or justify <laughs> your. Position. You should wear. If you wore lipstick, we could see your lips. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with my lips. Not saying there is. What What is your argument? Do you have an argument? Oh, were you not listening? Listen, um, I can't. I can't comment. All you've this done is, is so. This is this is so. this is so dumb. I feel bad for and your not partner. About, Honestly, thank you. he's trying. Like he's trying to Wait, have an actual husband. debate, and you're being a snark queen. Well, shark. if we yeah. if we ever get shark. married, we can work on that. Go ahead, shark. Oh, I sure. Well, they were. They, I, I I I have nothing to comment on this specifically. They were talking about Christianity. I don't think we should touch on that. There's no reason to talk Go. about it. We can't. 
True, that'd be totally off topic. We do want to go to our special feature <laughs> where we poll the audience on what subtopic they'd most like to hear you guys talk about. So this is fun. The number one chosen one was, Duh, do only fans customers harm society more broadly somehow? Oh sure, I, I can I can talk on that. Um, I I would say no, they don't harm society more broadly. I guess we can we we, we can talk about specific. Here I, I'll I'll talk to you, the Rachel Andrew family, Wilson family. Um, do you uh would would you like to talk about more like porn broadly or just specifically just talk about OnlyFans, like porn customers? You buy you're you're a porn consumer. You're the booty consumer, something like that, or just like OnlyFans specifically. I'm fine with porn. I mean, I've got a ton, a ton of data on porn in general and what it does to the consumer. Um, but I think you could make just a very basic argument that maybe will get us somewhere here. Uh, sure. I just, I, I just, I just wanted to know exactly. Yeah, if, sure. If you were okay so with like, that, and when I take you in a direction you weren't comfortable with. No. Yeah. I, I think you, you said you don't think they cause any harm, but I think they cause harm to themselves and society at large. We're facing catastrophic collapse of birth rates in almost every country in the world. There's only a couple of places in the world where that's not happening right now. In the United States, it's been really terrible for the economy. Um, it forces a lot of mass migration because people are getting married less and they're having a lot less children. And this is um, all because of porn? If we removed porn, this I, would be No, fixed. porn is a contributing factor because it removes any sort of um, motivation, right? Everything you do policy-wise, mm -hmm. I think you guys would agree, you're either encouraging or discouraging behavior. You're either mm -hmm. um, reinforcing or discouraging some kind of behavior. That's why we make public policy. So to have free ubiquitous amounts of porn on the internet that kids can see at the age of 11 on average, it does rewire the brain. I dropped a study in the chat. I have more. I don't want to like just drop 20 studies in the chat because you guys aren't going to have time to like go through them all. Um, but this is a thing. We know that it, it, it removes men's desire to really go out there and try and find a wife and have a family. They see no reason not to just sit there and fap to somebody for eight bucks a month or whatever. And they have this parasocial relationship. This is why we see young men in Japan don't date. Young men here don't date. We have this incel problem, right? Where young men, the real world dating is tough. It's mm -hmm. hard. You get rejected. Um, so you have to I'm compete. Single. You have to compete with other men. It's very tough. So it's like mm -hmm. when you put this um, seeming uh, answer to that problem in front of them for just a few dollars a month, uh, why not do that, right? But is that going to be good for society overall or is it going to deteriorate the whole social structure and impact the economy and impact people very personally because they don't leave their house. They stay <laughs> stay online and have parasocial relationships instead of real world ones. Yeah. So this kind of ties back. I was thinking about responding to it, but I decided not to, not to get off track, but I can kind of touch on that to touch on this as well. The whole, like, why don't we just put anybody, everybody in, in like a tube and give them heroin and everything uh, for one, that may not be what they want. And because of doing that, that'd be harm. And two, because there is value in experiences um, I think there's value in having an experience and I think there's value in doing something Those are and being there for your the actual experience of what we're talking about. Well, those are now, experiences. I don't know what you're talking you are, about. It, when you're watching porn, that is an experience. I'm talking about the experience of having sex. You, you said- No, no, no. You were talking about tubes and, and you know, if people were all plugged up to heroin and this and that. You think that there's some validation there due to experience, but that is an experience. It is an experience. Uh, and they're enjoying like that I said, experience. They wouldn't, they may not want to be a part of that experience. Yeah, but Especially if they, if you if do they, it they did want to be a part of that experience, you would be okay you, with that, right? If you really, if somebody really wants to simply just be hooked up to like a heroin tube and then mm -hmm. drink like Mountain Dew and, and, and do all that, I don't think the state should step in and stop them. Oh, of course uh, we you can don't. have. Sure. Okay. Yep. That's true. I think uh, that's a normal thing to say. No, I don't think um, it is a normal thing to say. Okay. Yep. You can feel that way. Uh, I, I think like what, what would be far better and what a normal human being would obviously say is that, hey, you know what we should do? We should be like incentivizing these people to not want to do that by giving positive reinforcement, <coughs> not negative reinforcement. Like well, why, wait, people. wait, why? Like, why? Wait, that makes no sense. Why would you want to reinforce that they not do this behavior that you just said that they should be able to do? Um, just because you should be able to doesn't mean that we can 
we should like uh, always be uh, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't like, you know, advise against it. Yeah. OK. But in this particular case, you're saying mm-hmm. if a person wants to be on a heroin drip all day long, mm-hmm. get high as he wants and is enjoying the hell out of the experience, mm-hmm. that that should be totally permissible. But at the same time, yep. you're saying we should draw up incentives to not have people do that. Would yep. one of those incentives maybe be that it would be illegal to do that? No, um, because that doesn't actually no. reduce usage and that doesn't actually reduce yeah, um, so I'm heroin sure. addiction. So, oh, no, it does. So making, uh, crime, the, making things criminal, we can, though, we can go, them? We can go even <laughs> like, deeper than that. I, I would think I would consider that um, the, to be, I, I, th- I think that'd be a little un, un, uh, immoral to like take that option from someone. I, it is their person. Why it's would it be body. immoral they to have, take that away from them? What, I'm, they have, it's their person. It's that. their body. They have free agency and they should be able to do what they want without um, in, in the purview of what they do with their own body. Man, that's a and lot of, that. of presuppositions that you're putting down there. The first presupposition that you put down okay. there is that they're free agents. What makes them mm-hmm. free agents? Do you not believe in no. free will? I do. But what, what makes them free agents? Uh, the free will sapiens do you think that people should be free sure and, and I mean, when you define jesus, freedom jesus when you define freedom. freedom is it unlimited no no so you don't actually think people should be free well i mean it's free asterisks what does that mean well as in there's conditions and what if are those condi- others and and so those conditions you put on how are you weighing mm-hmm. them you're weighing them against things that you consider preferable behavior against things you consider non-preferable behavior same exact thing that we weigh these things so Mm -hmm. if you say i don't want somebody to be addicted to heroin because that would be bad for them to be Mm -hmm. on a heroin drip all day but i think that they should be able to do that to me it makes no sense why should they be able to do that if you're opposed to them doing that i can be opposed to somebody doing it but still allow them to do it because it's their life and their choice but okay so where do you draw the moral parallel here you draw the moral between what between when you ought to tell somebody not to do something versus when you should tell them to. Um, well, when, oh, do you mean simply just when I should tell them not to or when I believe the state should step in and stop them? Well, that when anybody should versus. step in, anybody Guidance. should step in, state or anybody otherwise, should step in? any other agent. Uh, uh, any other, literally any other agent when there's a possibility of them getting hurt. Yeah, but if they're, if they're on a heroin drip. You think mm-hmm. that's good for them? I didn't say that. Uh, that's so you why think you should step in answer. in that point, right? I believe I believe that someone should be like, "Hey, bro, maybe yeah. not. What's going on?" Yeah, you just know? not the state. Yeah, no. Why not the state? It, that's why not the state? I think it's bad. You think it's bad, but yeah, you still can't justify because increased, increased think, criminalization has yeah. But Maddie, um, net, if you think that your friend, harm. if you think your friend should step in, but not the state, tell me what the distinction yeah. there is. The distinction is that with the state stepping in, that is creating a criminalization. What criminalization does is it prevents that person from getting a good job later. It doesn't treat heroin usage or heroin addiction as a health crisis and only gets them into a constant cycle of uh, incarceration. And that has not shown to be a a viable deterrent. The state, instead of incarcerating them, steps in and says something like, we're just not going to make heroin legal for people. But what does gonna, that mean? We so if someone's using heroin mm-hmm. and it's not legal. Does that mean that they are then going to jail? What is the mechanism here then with which the state is enforcing that? Well, the state doesn't even need to enforce it. He was just talking about incentives, right? So at what point do you step in? Do you We're think that the state incentives. that it's appropriate for the state to step in? I think that it's appropriate you if you were willing to tell a, a young girl. In, yeah, what does that willing, mean? If you're willing to tell a young girl that you think that her OnlyFans career is bad because they're a friend of yours, but you think that the state shouldn't be able to step in and say the exact same thing. Why do you think that the state shouldn't be able to? Because well, when I'm... The, what, oh, wait, 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 Maddie. Be careful. Be careful here. You may be walking into a trap. I so mean, we're not talking about, we're not talking about the state not saying anything. Do you, if, if, you, if you only mean Biden should be like, hey, think about going to college and not OnlyFans. I don't care. But you're not That's talking right. about the state simply saying something. You're talking about the state criminalizing, getting in, getting into their lives more involved than simply just talking. So yeah, we're talking about like an enforcement yeah, mechanism. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's exactly where I wanted this to go. So I have to ask you, if you had a friend of yours who was about to do one of these heroin drips and said, hey, look, Chris, I just really like this. Right. And I'm going to do it. And you just need to respect my right to do that. 
Would you let him do that? Or would you ever, would there ever occur to you to use any type of force to stop him from doing that? Force? Yeah. You mean like beat him or something? Well, I don't know. Like uh, I might, I might knock a needle out of a friend's hand before he shot up. Yeah. Um, any, any amount of force whatsoever. Um, uh, the biggest thing for me would be like the state of mind and like knowing the person. If I could feel like this is like, and if, if I have somebody who I know is impulsive, bipolar, who can go on massive mood swings, and I know them personally like that, and I know this this could like not be a real choice that they're actually making, but one of desperation of something else, then I would be like, then I, I may do something. And they're normal people, ones. they're just addicts. No, I would respect their agency and like it sucks. Of and you would. like have you have you had any family members who have struggled with addiction? Of course. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, because so have I. And one of the things that's heartbreaking and that anyone who is has you have to a family their member decision. No, what you have to do because respect no one decision. is going to no one's going also, to get over addiction. Porn. Yeah, drugs are also not porn. Also, no one gets over an addiction unless they want to change unless they recognize that there's a problem. And oftentimes it requires hitting rock bottom for them to then get that change and get the help they need. Also, I treat addiction like Mm -hmm. a health crisis, not like a reason to criminalize someone and to um, enforce. I mean, I know you love fascism, so you're all about authoritarianism and like making the state. I don't know where you came up with any of that. I have no idea. It's not like it's your name on a, any platforms or anything. Oh, I see. I see. Mm-hmm. So, so the but name, like, the name, the name is but the question was in that. So you, the question, the question is that you're concerned about the enforcement mechanism versus I what providing would say guidance. If my parents name me Adolf. <laughs> I, I probably say like that. Would, would I instantly be a Nazi? I just, I don't. Maybe. I, don't. I mean, you Maybe. might if the glove fits. Maybe it's just, it's just silly. And back, by the way. Back to what you were saying, Chris, because I'm still I still don't really understand this. Sure. I'm, I'm trying. That's unsurprising. And I'm, I'm really trying to. Mm-hmm. So uh, w- would you be willing if your friend or family member was like a normal person? Would you knock the needle out of their hand? Would you say, no, you're not doing this? Would you be willing to like pin them on the ground and say, no, I'm not going to let you hurt yourself? Uh <laughs> I mean, if it's something like drug abuse, I'm not sure if that would be the correct situation i would be there for them but mm-hmm. when it comes to like physical because where do you go after that oh i pinned them to the ground got them would i keep well, them like there what if they're gonna kill or themselves i, with I a, lock them in my fucking what if basement? they're gonna kill themselves with a knife let's say would you knock the knife out of their hand or would you respect their decision in this would case, I, if they're about to kill themselves yeah well for killing well, themselves and beating off are different okay so you guys keep saying this yes <laughs> apples and peaches are different we know <laughs> But if you want to draw an analogy, you find something that's similar to the thought process so that you can understand how a person would react in that thought process. And if it matches this one, Maddie. Do you recognize that there's a difference between drug abuse and drug use? Yes. Wait, 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 Maddie. Wait, Maddie. Wait, Maddie. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I, I think, I think, go I for think it, got sure. it, okay. Yeah. So when, when they're sitting here and they, and they go, oh, but different things are different. We understand that. What they're saying is they're what they're baking into the question is more like, oh, we think it's close enough. The problem with us is we don't think it's close enough to actually make that analogy and that comparison. Well, to, so wait, wait, you know, a person who's strapped to heroin is going to die from. Sure. You're yeah, saying okay. if someone so if ties I say, themselves so if to I the say railroad somebody, tracks, somebody's about to would kill you them. untie them? So if I say if somebody's about to kill themselves with a knife. Well, it is. Again, was, it's close enough. About the com- it's not an apt comparison. comparison. I, well, 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 I was talking well about whatever could like be an apt comparison. You give me one. What would be an apt comparison? I don't have the time. Like, it'd be more like porn. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. Than heroin and killing yourself. But I, I, I do think these things are so fundamentally different. It's very hard to draw like a, a really good analogy that would be My here. question. Because the thing is, is like, I would answer this question and then and then you would ask me the question about the same thing about porn. Like if we're, we're going to bring bring it back to like the actual debate topic, and then I would say no, and then you'd be confused. But the reason you'd be confused is because I don't believe that they're similar enough to make a, a reasonable analogy here. So we can keep doing this if you want, but I, it, it, it wouldn't really so help the actually, actual situation. Okay. If it's okay with you guys, because I think Andrew made a pretty good point about that, that they don't, it's very hard to pin. It's like trying to nail Jello to a wall to figure out like, yes, they're, they're perfectly fine with the state intervening to do with the stuff that they like, but not the stuff that we like, and they can't exactly tell you why. It's just uh, some vague concept of harm. But uh, Shark and I both dropped our studies in the chat here. 
Sure. And I I looked over his while we were sitting here. And it's very interesting that he oh, thinks this supports yours. his claim because uh, they talk at length about 2016 MRI research, mm -hmm. how you can see the difference in brain scans between porn viewers, what their emotional mm -hmm. motivation is, what the problematic yep. behaviors are that are associated, even structural differences in the brains of these people. Yep. Um, and that yeah. some of them who are addicts are pr primed for addiction. Just like we know this is mm -hmm. how it is with alcohol and drugs. Some people can have a couple beers, they're fine. Some people can't. Some people can do a little Coke on the weekend a few times when they're like, 25 and never do it again. Some people end up with crippling addictions. It's like that with everything. And all this, the conclusion of this research of this article was just the investigator saying, well, we would like more data. Like, yeah, we can see differences. We can see structural brain differences. We can see the effects of porn use in people. We just want to study it more. It does not negate anything I said whatsoever. In fact, a lot of it confirms everything that I said. It does not. So, so what this article talks about are the different are the, those differences that you talked about. They're right. You're right. There are differences in the brains of people who are compulsive, who are habitual, who do have these problems. And it's not porn users is what the article talked about. The main thing that they talked about were those people who self-identified as having a porn issue. They use the porn um, and it, they they specifically said they surveyed and said it hurt their life. These are the people that we're talking about. The yeah, problem that's is, gonna is be that, with any addiction. Yeah. That's, right. Yep. So or, this says right here that research disorder. on people with compulsive huh. sexual behavior suggests blah, 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 that in particular, they reflect a change in the person's appetite conditioning in which their biological response seems to be greater than normal. This is what I was referring to in Norman Deutsch's work, where he says, yes, and in those people, we see changes in their ability to have normal sexual relationships to relate to other human beings. And I think all this um, philosophical stuff aside and all the empirical stuff aside, what do you guys think about the fact that this is known to affect people's ability to pair bond, to have relationships, to actually go out in the world and attempt to find a partner to get married and have children with? Or are you guys going to take like this other, I've had this debate with a lot of leftists and a lot of them will just be like, well, anyone can raise babies in any sort of situation. You don't need a mom and a dad and you don't need healthy marriages. Uh, we can just have test two babies and they can be, one guy told me they can be raised by a bunch of frat guys in a frat house and it's no different. So I'm wondering how you guys feel about the society-wide impacts of millions of people being able to have parasocial relationships rather than real interpersonal relationships that produce marriages and children. Well, okay. Once again, talking about this, um, I think there is everybody I, I would imagine would agree, or most people would agree, that there is real fundamental value that somebody gains from actually having that experience opposed to a simulation of it. And now, where I, I feel like when it comes to all of this stuff, especially when it came to the brain structure stuff, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess at your brain structure and say when you thought when you heard and when I sent you the thing that said oh brain structures are different, you thought brain structures were changed by the porn. No, is that true? No. no. Okay. No. So you okay? Good. So it's not the causation. No. Great. Amazing. Okay. <coughs> so porn wasn't causing it. You just believe that porn is something that exists. And since people can possibly get addicted to it, we should ban it. I think that just like all other behaviors that produce crippling uh, effects on people's life, we've talked about drugs, alcohol, gambling, any uh, gaming. Some people get so addicted to gaming that they won't go to work. They neglect their family. Their whole life falls apart over it, right? What about hobbies? The point is, and your, your, your article mentioned that there's always a portion of the population who is more predisposed to this than others. That's true, which is why we need limits. We need limits. I'm not saying everything has to be banned. Andrew said that all porn should be banned. I think that free internet porn should be banned. I think we should go back to something we but had, only you know, maybe 50, so 70 my, years ago my, where you did not have this. You, you can just get it like it's air now. So you're and okay that with only fans, because not, you I don't would, know. I would agree that we need some stricter regulations on, on porn, Ooh. just generally. I think the likely, I think with children having... Um, with children having too close access with it, I think I think that's I think that's harmful, 
it's bad. And I think it's been shown that it's bad. And so some extra restrictions on something like that, like clamping down on some of these sites, like porn, like Pornhub got um uh, got hit pretty big for not having a good verification process, and now they have that. I think that's a great step forward. Nobody's talking about that. Sh- that's like that, that that nobody wants that. People want that, right? Okay, so you agree what, that my, if we my can question- prove some harm, that there needs to be at least restrictions. So you're you're not going no, to talk about restricting. Have harm you guys addressed children. any of the stuff that I cited at the beginning? All the stuff I cited I at the beginning showing that there are women who are victims of this, that there are, you know, this large market of men who are much older than these younger, more vulnerable women who are creating this uh, motivation for them to, at a very young and impressionable age, average age of 21, these are our future mothers, our future wives, our future CEO boss girls, whatever you want them to be, right? Do we want such an easy on-ramp process where every 18-year-old girl, the day she turns 18, can decide to become a porn star. You guys think that's not harmful? Please justify that. When are you are you asking if when anyone turns 18, we should not pro- like allow them to take agency and like decide for themselves? Are you saying that like we should have say no? These are the only acceptable things. Like if yeah, it's their body, like no, saying, no, no, no. That, that seems said. weird. No, I she's want like you to justify your said. position. You know, don't do this. Are you saying I've made my? I'm position just trying clear. to clarify. Justify I, I your disagree. position as a good left. Rachel, I have a question. So the, with the papers liberal, that don't you Rachel, care about these young vulnerable girls Rachel, and the creepy men who are paying Rachel, them five bucks a month to look at their vajay? Rachel, so I have a question. I have a question for you. No, so the papers, no the papers you that you were referencing, nope, the papers that you I'm were referencing, the papers right, you were, then don't answer it. Nope. Then don't answer. I'll just say it. Just and then you don't have position. to. And then you, you don't have to answer it. it. James, please. Can I like please say once. what I want to say? Is, Thank well, you. Okay, if if uh, Rachel does have a question. You don't want to give it a just a sincere, pithy response, but we'll let you ask your question. But I mean, it, I can. Yeah, will... I'll, I'll answer first. I'll answer first and then ask my question. I don't even think you can restate. Cool. Your thank question. you. I don't think you think much at all anyway. So yeah, okay. restate. Her so question. thank you. I'm sorry. Up. What, Andrew? Restate her question. Andrew, what? Um, her question. Andrew, I can't hear you. Yeah, you so, can't restate it. You um, the question is. Respond. You got 20 seconds. Let's go, Maddie. Okay, so the question is like to uh, justify whether or not we should allow 18 year olds, um, 18 year old girls saying, oh, should it be an option for them to um, show their buttholes to older men? My answer would be when like as a society, we have determined that when you turn 18, you are legally an adult. With that adulthood comes um, the expectation that they have a, a degree of agency to take in their own lives, whether that's joining the military, whether that's going to college, whether that's showing their butthole on on uh, online. But like, they can't that smoke or person, drink at no, but they like, but they have the right to do that. But I that's, didn't make that choice. <laughs> Right, but we as a society they can't smoke and they can't drink, but they I'm can just... <laughs> forever put pictures of their naked body well, on the what? internet to whoever. Wait, 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 wait! Why are you throwing it at us when nobody here defended that? <laughs> because you don't yeah, know, you don't know if we want to reduce. What if? Said, what if we, we, we don't? Society. What if we don't agree with that? Once you turn eighteen, you have agency. You can do what you want, right? I'm well, saying this is harmful. Clearly. You know what's harmful? Like, do you think eighteen-year-olds shouldn't? Yeah. Do you think like? Exactly. It can cause harm. Does that mean that we should outlaw it for everyone because it I'm has the potential to harm legality. specific people? Is, okay. No, but I'm saying I'm legality. saying that's this that's a more of a question. that's more of a that's more of a philosophical question is that if no, there moral. could be well, if you listen, maybe you figure it out. If there could be harm done, if there's the potential of harm to people who have a predisposition for addiction or like in all the papers that Rachel is referencing that are specifically about addictive personality disorder. If there's that and there's the potential that someone with addictive personality disorder not can have can get addicted disorder. to it, reread your studies because that's exactly that. what they reference. That's exactly specifically well, not only what that, they reference. You have another problem with this, which is that there's no guarantee that if you take the one addiction away, they will just get addicted to some other thing. There is a genetic component to this. So for instance, a person mm-hmm. may genetically be predisposed to being an alcoholic and have a very addictive personality when alcohol is around, but have no addictive personality towards any other substance. 
don't you think that then it's um, on that person to like what people do when they know that they have a predisposition to be addicted to alcohol? Isn't it then smart for them to stay away from it? They don't know. Yeah, they don't addicted. You don't know until it's too late. But what and about I'm people that have that his, that family history of addiction to alcohol? Not or alcohol. Wait, 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 wait. James, that was for those my that question do. to her. My question Fair. to her was, if we can see that older men with money are creating an incentive to make younger, more vulnerable, less experienced girls who don't have resources, who don't have their education yet, who have no, like, no real like security in the world. Often these are the girls who are doing this again, average age, 21.2 years old to it's start so the sexy like, only fans. It I want her like to justify that point what is, is that going the to age discrepancy for the rest of their and lives. Is your problem the age discrepancy? No, I'm saying it's harmful and exploitative under any other thing that you would probably never justify this sort of thing. In this one instance, in this one debate, you are fine with older men with money exploiting the weaknesses of much younger, more inexperienced and vulnerable girls. And I want you to justify adults. why in this incident, adults. in this instance, it's fine. Yeah, they're adults. Yes. So oh. the they're adults being who adult, have agency. They are adults who have their own agency, agency and no one's justif- and no one's forcing them to be on it. So it's then a I guess choice. we got to yes. get rid of that whole Me Too movement then. If you're over 18, you're you have agency, you're responsible for yourself. No one's forcing you to do anything. It doesn't matter consent? that you had a dream to be an actress or a uh, singer. It doesn't matter if you were coerced. Do you know, do you know that there's They consent are consenting. Involved? They're just being exploited. The yes, casting couch is about exploited. consent with exploit, isn't it, Maddie? You think it's okay to sexually harass women at work when they have not consented? Uh, wait a second. The casting couch is about exploitation. Not about consent. They consent to it because they right. want the role, but they're being exploited because they're young girls. They're really? young and they're inexperienced really? and they have a dream so, and there's something they want. Yeah. And they think this you is the ticket. So many actresses. You would never be okay with it under that circumstance. But under this circumstance, they're 18. They're adults with agency. They, they Screw them. Screw them. My, my question. Right? Okay. So my question here. Mm-hmm. Interesting. There are a couple of things here. Mm-hmm. Where does the exploitation come from? It comes, comes from, from the, the, it comes okay. from um, being young and needing money. Mm-hmm. It might come okay. from being inexperienced and not having good judgment. Uh, I have a study here that shows that 88% of teenagers who end up in psychiatric wards come from broken homes where both parents are not there. So we know that's oh, a can super you, Can high, you restate that one more time? I want to make sure. Yeah, there's right. a study I have from 2012 where they um, did a, a study on a children's site ward for Mm -hmm. teenagers. It was like 13 to 19 or 13 to 18. And 88% of the children who were admitted there came from broken families where one or the other, or maybe even sometimes both biological parents were not there. Uh, Mm -hmm. Divorce is super high, uh, especially among certain demographics. Most kids are born to single moms now. We know this is a risk factor economically, psychologically. There's a lot of vulnerable young women who at 18 have all the motivation in the world to do this. It's not mostly, it's mostly not the girls who are in med school or, you know, going to university. There's some that do that. Sure. But a lot of them are not making enough money. They are vulnerable in some way and they are pressed to do this. Most people enter sex work, girls, women specifically, because there's some sort of pressure on them why they need to. And this older market of men with lots of money is there willing to throw this pittance of cash at them to see them in their most vulnerable state. And then this material is out there forever. And like I said, there's a book a woman wrote about all of the cases where these girls have been tracked. They have been stalked in real life. Their their material has been leaked. There is real harm here that's caused by the people who are creating this market. And I, you okay. guys seem like you would care about this under any other circumstance. But right now it's like, screw these 18 year old girls. They know what they're getting into. We don't care. And I want to hear the justification for why it's not harmful to them. Okay. So a couple things. Once again, touching on OnlyFans, you keep trying to use OnlyFans as simply a proxy for porn when that's just simply not the case. Once again, the top people who are on OnlyFans do not do porn. Now, not all of them, some of them do, but the most people, but the, if you look at like top 10, top 100 people who are on OnlyFans, not all of them do porn. A lot of them are rappers. A lot of them are other celebrities. And so it would make sense that people of the similar cohort would be 
there as well. I mean, if you could find information to prove that the people who specifically are We're subscribing not to the, the young girls only are being exploited on OnlyFans. Okay. Great. Okay, so you're, about, about, you're okay with OnlyFans t- for that? We're talking about we're talking about the the simps and specifically the sexual element. Okay, I I understand. That's why I brought this point up because we can't just use these. Well, if you understood, you wouldn't need to because, have made no, the well, because okay, you don't know who the audience is of just the people who are these really young, be- really young girls. If if you can still mm-hmm. prove that, I mean, go ahead. But yeah, ninety eight percent nine. This is from OnlyFans. Ninety eight percent of all their content is adult content. So we're talking about a Must teeny tiny minority of people who are not doing adult <laughs> content. Also, you know that on people OnlyFans. on OnlyFans aren't just women, right? Like there yeah. are plenty of guys. Do you have a, do you have a same issue with young well, like eighteen year old guys? Many, yes, yeah. I do. I absolutely just as exploited. Yeah. It's Would you, just is, as it, bad. is it the so is it the the age discrepancy that you have a problem with? Because you mentioned that there's all these older men, and that's something that you stress on. You really stress the, and yeah, emphasize because, older parts. Because part. normally, so you say yes, that the reason, there should be an age limit. No, the reason I'm stressing it to you is because people on Twitch, people on the left in general are always saying it's the dirty old men of the patriarchy who are always victimizing all the young girls. I hear this every day, all the time. It's so you don't have a problem you, with it. So you and guys I'm don't have a problem saying, with it. No, it's, I'm saying it's that all the you leftists would normally that have a problem, have a with, problem it. with it any other time. I do have a problem with it. Of course Why? I do. Because pornography is immoral and exploitative of whoever is performing. It could be young gay people. It could be young trans people who we know are far more predispositioned to have mental illness and health, mental health problems. These are the most vulnerable people who do this. It's not empowering and, and good. Nobody's just like, I did porn at 18 because I thought it would be fucking awesome. There might be two people out there, but let's be honest. We know this is a very vulnerable population that feels like they need to do this. <laughs> OnlyFans isn't just porn. So yeah, like you're 98%, there, like going, talking Maddie, to 98% of the platform is adult content. And that's the topic of the debate. Stop and immoral according to who? Justify your position. You still haven't, because you can't, you're not even smart enough to do it. You Immoral can sit there and make all who? the bitchy faces you want and sit there and... This is just what my face does. Sick. Are you going to ever this justify just, your this position? Is my, this is Do you have anything face. to contribute at all? Do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share? No, I've just sat here vapidly and spewed you nothingness. Have. That's exactly what... Um, take a look I'm at the avoid. chat. I'm take avoid. a look at the chat and see what they think of your performance. Oh, that's how I base my self worth is off of the chat. This so, might be. wow. Okay, everything I say is snarky. I don't even mm. have another mode of being. Like, I don't no. even have a personality. Other I haven't than pretended to. Just to. Do this. I this haven't. Pretended. I have. You haven't pretended to. Are you guys? <laughs> are you guys done, or do you want to move on? I'm waiting for well, you. Well, we just want you to justify your position. Okay, you don't sound in this debate yet. ever. It's this been be two hours almost, and you have not yet even attempted it. This might be a good opportunity to go into the Q and A. Thoughts? Any last things you guys want to say before we do? Any last closings that tie together the threads um, of this debate? Sure. So I I, I I can touch on something. I feel like I've I've been I've been a little left out of the conversation every now and again, but you know it happens. There's, there's been a back, bit of back and forth. You love to see it. You love the conflict. Um, when it, when it comes to these like platforms where you can post whatever you want, anybody can just make an account and post something, right? And so it's also really difficult to make proxies for what you said, like. What was it? Ninety-eight percent is adult content. I would wonder what they would classify specifically as adult content, right? So if I post like a loot, like if, if I post like my shirt off, if somebody typically posts something where it's like TOS. I mean, like when it comes to adult content, my channel is adult content here on Twitch. Also on YouTube, my channel is adult content as well. Um, so I would really wonder what the, what they would mean by that when they specifically say adult content. That on top of the fact that simply because most of it is adult content, that doesn't mean it gets uh, that many views. Once again, you, you said that most people aren't making nearly any money or if any money on uh, OnlyFans. Most of the people who are making most of the money on, on OnlyFans, the people who are making the top amount of money aren't doing porn. Um, there's like Tyga and Car- Cardi B and Mia Khalifa, if you know Mia Khalifa, but she's not doing porn. She never did porn, ever, um, as far as I know. Um, it, it's the same with like the average YouTube video. You guys are on YouTube. The average YouTube video gets, if I remember, it's between 2,000 and 8,000 views. Um, but I wouldn't sit here and say necessarily simply because of that it's exploitative. 
risk. Now, I think there can be factors that can make it exploitative. Absolutely. 100 percent. But I think it's the goal of society to try to reduce those as much as possible so people can make informed decisions about what they would like to do in their lives as adults rather than limit what they can do simply because we believe that we know better for them. I think it's typically better in, in the world if people make their own decisions about what they typically want when, are, when they're able to have the full breadth of being able to exert their free will um, than typically just all of the time was cracking down on literally everything, right? But like to, to tie back to what we're talking about, um, I, I, I stated before that like there's value to experiences. I don't believe, and I don't believe that there's been anything to prove that specifically, since the amount of people who genuinely say that they have a porn issue is about like 5% of people who use porn, period. Um, and eighty about 80% 80 of the human population uses porn. I would say that this is more of a problem of things that we can address rather than the porn in and of itself. Simply because it can trigger something in somebody to be addictive does not mean that it is addictive in and of itself. It should be going away. I think that we should create structures here to help people in uh, when, when they are, when they do fall into those, honestly, reasonably rare scenarios um, in, in their life. Thank you very much. Any last thoughts? Maybe a minute, a minute yeah. or so from... Uh... Andrew, Rachel, or Maddie? Yeah, yeah. So first of all, I just want to let you know that neither one of you ever justified a single position that you took. Not not once. And we asked numerous times. And like even in uh, Chris's uh, closing, look at how they torture the stats. Like the average YouTube video gets between three and 8,000. It's like the 90% of YouTube videos never get 1,000 views ever, right? You can torture these things however you want to, which is why in society, we also have to justify the things that we do. It's not good enough to just say, well, I think that, you know, based on these certain empirical metrics that I'm looking at, that we should probably go about this because we don't know for sure if the porn itself is addictive or if it's just people with addictive personalities who are going after porn. I still want a justification for why either of those things are bad in your worldview, which I never got once, never once. Maddie's been asked, I don't know how many times. Justify our worldview. In fact, Maddie spent most of the opening talking to her chat. She never even paid attention to a word that we said. She's not even paying attention right this second. She's still talking to the chat, right? It, what, what a clusterfuck. What a bunch of madness from these people. They have no justifications for anything that they say. They didn't contend with any of Rachel's points for the most part in the empirics. Definitely didn't contend with 90% of the things that I said. It's a, it, it was a terrific dumpster fire. It's good for content, but we didn't get anywhere. Yeah. Can I go next? Yeah. Okay. So we saw something that Andrew and I are up against all the time, which is we're talking to leftists who, if you go to their channel and watch their content, they are hardcore leftists. They are not at all the libertarians that they are in the debate, right? Whenever you debate them, suddenly they're libertarians. They want everyone to have freedom to do what they want because that's just generally better in the world. But if you talk to them about things like free speech on you know, Twitter, what you can say about elections and certain other events that have no-no terms or no-no words, they'll justify all kinds of censorship. They'll justify all kinds of restrictions on economic situations, on all kinds of things they love restrictions. They're not libertarians. They do not believe liberty is what's best for everyone until they're debating conservatives, when they suddenly become libertarians who want everybody to have free choice and to be able to follow you know, whatever it is they want to do. Um, they did not prove um, anything they didn't justify anything. I showed a lot of evidence of things that were harmful. We had logical argumentation walking through our worldview and justifying how and why these things are harmful. And Chris, I will say, really did a good job. Uh, Shark over there. He, he at least was engaging somewhat with things he was trying. It's just that he ends up doing a lot. He knows that he can get into a lot of traps. He could see we were trying to pin him down on certain things so that we could point out hypocrisies. So he ended up doing a lot of, well, you sometimes this may be the case. And just because sometimes there's harm doesn't mean there's always harm. And we, we need to have structures in place and all this kind of like real vague stuff. But at least he was trying. Maddie is the reason that I say most women can't debate. They don't want to be logical. They don't want to think through their worldview. They don't want to justify anything they believe. They just turn into a stupid bitch. So that's what usually happens. And that's my closing. Juicy. Maddie, what are your last drawing to gather the threads of this debate? 
Yeah. First of all, Rachel, like a plus you really, uh, you really nailed it. Um, and no, look, shark is incredible and did extensive research on this subject. And that's why I feel really happy to have him as a debate partner because he just does a fantastic job. I tend to be more of a bruiser. I like, um, I like getting a little angry. I blame, I'm a fire sign. What can I say? But um, it's just interesting that their moral framework seems so malleable, yet they claim it's from the basis of their their orthodoxy, the, the church they go to, and that the Bible's only incidental, and yet the Bible is what justifies like things like alcohol and other things. Look, there are studies showing the negative impacts of addiction. There's studies showing what that can do physically at the neurological level and it's devastating but you don't see us looking to ban things like processed sugar you don't see us saying that because people um can eat too much food because that's a compulsive disorder the eating disorders where you you binge we're not trying to ban mcdonald's um because there is a certain degree of personal agency that we assume for every single adult and that is what is important to try to say that we don't we believe that everything should either be restricted or then all of a sudden things are open what we are saying is that we allow for personal agency to be a, a cornerstone of our values so that people can choose how they live their life so much as it impacts themselves. The question is that when that extends to negative outcomes for other people, for the society at large, that is where there's an issue. Now, those issues don't necessarily um, warrant the imposition of the state or the state to use its power to enforce desired behaviors or to enforce certain things. They can absolutely create advisories. You see that with cigarettes, for example, how there are plenty of government funded advertisements and campaigns um, that are uh, dissuading people from smoking cigarettes. But it's still legal because we acknowledge that adult people have the agency and the right to decide what they do to their own body, given that it's not harmful or it's not done in a place that's harmful to others. And without being able to demonstrate harm, tangible harm beyond it doesn't align with my religious framework, that's not a reasonable metric with which to measure harm. So until you can show a one-to-one -one correlation, a direct correlation that um, things like OnlyFans, people paying creators for their services, whatever their services are, whether that's porn, whether that's rapping, whether that's art, unless you can prove that that is creating measurable harm to society at large and that you can draw that line, it's not a dotted line, then you have no basis um, to stand your ground and um, you should watch some porn because it's a good time. We'll jump into these questions. Want to say, folks, a couple of housekeeping type things. Our guests are linked in the description. Check out those links if you'd like to hear more. Although we're going to hear plenty more as we've got a lot of questions. We're going to rush through these fast, but want to remind you many more juicy debates coming up. For example, Destiny and Matt Delonte colliding on Saturday, November 19th. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And with that, first up, Deej says, can we agree? We actually talked about that, what harm means. So that was actually asked earlier. Mark Reed says, Andrew, don't you smoke? Isn't that harmful for you? Why should we not ban things that you do that are demonstrably harmful, like smoking? That's a good question. And nobody said that you couldn't. And that my justification is not that we're all just autonomous and have complete and total agency with no restriction. We're not uh, endless freedomites, and neither are our opponents. And that was our entire point. Could you ban nic or smoking and nicotine and all of these different things and maybe even have a better society for it? It's very possible. Nobody's saying that you can't do that. And we never made a case that you shouldn't. There is no hypocrisy. We, made, we asked specifically for the justification that these people had for the arguments that they were making, and they had none. My justification, my wife's justification, is the orthodox teachings of our church. 
And we have the justification of God. Literally, we can justify our claims based on those things. At least now you can contest those things, and that's fair to do, and you can argue about those things, and that's fair to do too. But at least we gave a justification for why we think these things. Nothing from the other side. Nothing. Andrew and Rachel, Coffee Mom asks, which part of your worldview requires you to be condescending? This one coming in from Bowl of <laughs> The fact that anyone thinks we were the condescending ones in this debate is hilarious. Normally you might be right, but not this time. Man, Maddie the, had us way beat on that. The chemistry that you, Rachel, and Maddie Cakes have is off the charts. This one coming in well, from Bowl of Spaghetti says where... Okay, got that one. Coffee Mom. They love me. Redacted says... Also, just because Maddie was more uh, confrontational and uh, condescending does not mean you weren't too. Uh, you weren't too. This one from... Because I was very condescending. Redacted says, harm is when Springfield leaves lewd and lascivious remarks at the 3rd District. I don't know what that is. Danny T says, Andrew, prove your moral foundation is true. Your orthodox moral law giver also supported slavery in Exodus 21. Does slavery do harm in your worldview? So there's, a point of fact, there's a point of fact it didn't. It's not, it's not accurate. What Exodus speaks about is actually an equalization, which was brand new at the time. Nobody had ever seen a conquered people not be enslaved with equal rights. It wasn't quite equal, but it was completely revolutionary for the time. And so it's an inaccurate statement across the board. And I'm happy to debate about it. And the thing is, is that if you want to ask me if my moral claims are true, I think that that's a fair thing to ask. But in this particular case, I just wanted to understand what their morality was and them understand what our morality is before we even got, get to the debate so that we can understand the different purviews uh, and how we look at these things. Chris, I think, did try to do that a bit. Maddie, on the other hand, nah, just threw it out the window. We're all autonomous agents. Here's all of my presuppositions, and they all must be true because, after all, I said them. This oh, one. also, were you were you referring to that one uh, uh, line or a couple lines about like I, I always interpreted it to be more about um, indentured servitude than actual slavery? Again, because here in the West we think revolutionary. about like, revolutionary, revolutionary for slavery. the time. Okay, I was just okay. Just yeah. wanted to know this one coming in from. Do appreciate it, Zola Mavolini says, Maddie, why do you waste your time debating people who probably okay. Enough of the insults, folks. This one coming in from Bull of Speed. He says, where is the debate, moderator? It's true. We let things go kind of loose around here. We don't like it being overly produced. We don't want a moderator that's overly controlling. That's not It was fun. good content, and you loved it. Just shut, you know, like, just this shut one. up. You said, you know you loved I kinda, it. I kind of wish we could talk about marriage, honestly. Happy to do it. Samir Farsain says, is your worldview affecting listening teenagers at this moment? Would you advise your own kids to apply it? If not, why push a selective application message if you wouldn't encourage your kids? Who, who's that for? I don't know. They didn't specify. I, I would imagine that it's us since we said that it wasn't bad. Um, so this, is, this, this comes into... Um, a really weird place. I don't know. Like some people don't understand that something can be fine while also not pushing somebody to do it or advising somebody to do it. So I think that there are many like pretty cool jobs that I wouldn't advise my kid to do. Like I wouldn't advise them to work on an oil rig. I wouldn't advise them to go crabbing if they want to. I wouldn't advise them to be a cop if I'm going to be completely honest. I wouldn't advise them to mow lawns because apparently that's more dangerous um, or go to the military. I don't think it's bad or we should stop somebody from doing something like a, 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 along those lines while, um, while also saying that it's necessarily bad. I come from I'm – a, I'm a military brat. Both of my parents were in the Army 30 years each. Uh, my mom told me – I remember when I was a baby. She said, if you – if you go to the military, I will kill you. They won't kill you. I'll kill you, right? Um, but other people, she's like, yo, if you want to go to the military, here's all the resources and everything. Um, it, can, it, it, can be something, it, it can be something like that. Um, 
And I, I think that even though I personally, I mean, like, I wouldn't if if like my like daughter was like if I had the I, I guess the if, uh, the idea between um, the choice between having like a gay son or thought daughter, um, if I'm going to be completely honest, if I knew that she was going to go like super famous on OnlyFans and she was like a grown ass adult, I mean, less women get raped in, um, on OnlyFans than uh, than on college, so. I mean, no, so, I wouldn't yeah. advise True. her to, to do it, I but if she was this. like, True. yo, if you, I want to be a content creator, dad, do you, do you love me? I'm like, go, go ahead, sweetie, do your thing. Maddie, you would more women get raped that. in well, church. Wait, you, go ahead. you would agree that all of those occupations that you listed that you wouldn't advise a person to do are necessary occupations, though, wouldn't you? Uh, necessary and dangerous. Yeah, nest, but necessary. Oh, sure. Being an OnlyFans skank is not necessary. Okay. I mean, we can actually. I mean, we're trying to get robotics to do a lot of these jobs, anyways, because they're so dangerous. We don't want make robotic to do porn. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, well, Andrew. with sex bots going absolutely nuts. I, I, I mean, I'm, wait, I'm yeah. waiting for my Elon sex bot to come dancing into my room and give me the sucky sucky three thousand. Okay, I heard that thing got like leather seats and everything on the inside. I bet it's crazy. Well, that's no, pretty gross. No. Thank Maddie you. Uh, that. But no, right. I, I think. Um, Maddie, do you have a I, I think. Uh, yeah. No, I think uh, Shark said it pretty succinctly, and I totally agree. It's like there are things that I would not necessarily encourage my um, also. I think kids as, as to a, I think in. entertainment is necessary. If I'm going to be completely honest, yeah, and like there are plenty of things that I would maybe say like, oh, you know, I would probably try to dissuade my kids from doing. But when they become a, a full adult, where they make their own decisions, the best thing I can do is support them regardless but that doesn't mean i have to necessarily encourage so it's that enforcement mechanism again that we're talking about so no it's like the same thing where it's like if i quiet necessary? like no one's asking you so it's the same way that i wouldn't encourage my kids to smoke cigarettes but like if they did like i the might only, be disappointed but like i wouldn't you know what sure yeah i do better think it's yeah yes yeah so you think yes. adult yeah. so you think adult <laughs> entertainment's necessary yes chris yes why yes yeah Yes. People yeah. love entertainment. It makes them happy. Yeah, no, also, not seems to be correlated. Adult entertainment. Also, it, no, this yeah, falls under also, entertainment. Yes. Wait, why yes. is it necessary? Yeah, listen. Hey, what happens I, if we get rid of it tomorrow? A, a lot of a, a lot of marriages would fall apart. Mm. What? Yeah. Oh, it's what? true. Yeah. You guys want to know yeah, something it's crazy? True. It's factually true. I think that uh, more marriages it, fall apart. You want to know something? Addiction. When it comes to spouses, when it comes to spouses who watch porn, they actually are less likely to divorce. Than spouses who don't. Is that what so you're I'm worried about, about Honestly, guys? It could, it could hold marriages you together. I watched, that, I watched porn you with my husband. Drop that source in the chat for me, bro, because I need I it for you. future debates. This I one. got you, bestie. And we don't believe you. Danny T says, okay. "Does smoking do harm? Is there a market for it?" I think this is for you, Andrew. Gee, you think so? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, smoking, generally speaking, is bad for a person, and I think that generally speaking, there's a market for it. This one from, appreciate it, Hates Stairs, says Andrew and Rachel, could your argument about OnlyFans being coercive also apply to the U.S. military, i.e. taking advantage of young souls with the promise of wealth at the end of the tunnel? Absolutely. In fact, uh, something that m my wife and I have both talked about very much, having had experience with it myself. So I'm going to just briefly state this that yes it is exploitive and that's why they go to college campuses in order to recruit and they I go specifically see. after young men but it is a necessary occupation at least uh at at the current moment in time so uh while it is exploitative i would say that the uh benefits to the average person are so overwhelming that uh, and, and, you know, things have gotten better with the VA and things like this. They're not nearly as bad as it used to be, uh, but they're they're a necessary evil at the moment. You one, got of it, my, you know? one of my areas of specialty is studying covert government operations. So I'm completely like anti U.S. military at this point. I would never advise anybody to go into it unless you're like super desperate and need free college for some reason. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it, 08072CD5 says, assuming porn damages reproduction of porn addicts and actors, wouldn't it be good for society for people without self-control to peacefully self-eliminate themselves out of the gene pool? No, no. Eugenics is immoral in our worldview. And our, uh, our opponents might say that they prefer reformations 
and that they prefer rehabilitation, but they really don't. Our side actually re- prefers the rehabilitation. Our side, the side of Christ, is the side that goes for rehabilitation, says that everybody can be saved and brought away from this madness. So uh, the the answer to that question uh, is is actually pretty simple from our worldview. This one, you know, he's right. Marcy. I used to. Uh, he, he's right. I used to um, uh, care more about rehabilitation, but honestly, I saw what conservatives are, and honestly, they cause more damage to society than almost any other thing that we can add to it. More than guns, more than drugs, more than more than porn, definitely. And honestly, I'm starting to believe that if you uh, take a test and you co- score like right of center on that uh, test that the government gives you, that you should be uh, placed in jail for minimum ten years. Um, and also, you know, if you can change people's brains, hit them with the brain zap. And turn them into a wait. What happened to the trans? people? Should be free. Yeah. Nothing. To do what nothing. They no, they should, this they came, should be trans. This they should came, be trans this and happy. From his trans earlier, them. This came from his earlier. Yeah. Uh, trans them. His earlier mm-hmm. Andrew research, and in his earlier Andrew research, he had made so and true. stated this point then too, and said, <laughs> "When I'm on MDD, I'm going to say that conservatives." Ought to be eliminated because they cause the most harm. Listen, I'm on my society. I'm on my script. I'm almost done with the script. I'm, I'm near the bottom. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, and it, it's this a bad one. it's a bad script. And you can't I don't identify, identify as a but... conservative, so I don't know what you're gonna do with me. What did you think I wanted to kill you or something? Some no, year? just put me in jail for ten years. I, I, do, I didn't want to put you in jail. Oh. Some I don't know who you are. Seth. Lady? But you wanted to put the conservatives in jail. Sorry. Okay. Which, by the way, this just proves are how you disingenuous interpreting they that are. As They're you? totally disingenuous. Didn't come for a debate. Everyone, just came assumes, to be disingenuous. everyone assumes I'm a conservative when they debate me. So. I mean, you can be. I don't know. That's I don't a large know what... generalization. Maddie's a conservative. It is. Samir Farsi says, what I, am a conservative. I always grasp. Samir says, what I always grasp from sin defending debaters is, quote, the buffet of sin is already so big, a new item like OnlyFans wouldn't really hurt much more. Don't eat here if you don't like it. What are your guys' thoughts? That's a pretty based and excellent point. Yeah, it's always the I defense met of more sin. And Shark. <laughs> Maddie and Shark, what do you think? You agree? Um, I mean, sure. I guess if we're if we're going to take like the religious standpoint of we you know we live in a sin sinful world and everything, then something honestly is pretty small is OnlyFans. Um, probably not even the top like three hundred websites in the entire planet um, doesn't really do that much harm, and many people don't really care. Maddie, thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I would say largely um, people don't care. And if you want to put the harm done in aggregate in terms of the total harm that's caused and what behaviors are leading to that harm being caused, OnlyFan is not even a blip on the radar. Yeah, I mean, if if the if the uh, converse argument would be OnlyFans is the uh, the, like straw that broke the camel's back, I highly doubt it. That wasn't the converse argument, and that's a weak ass camel. No, the converse (laughs) argument was just to say that you'll endlessly justify sin by saying because there's already sin, what's a little bit more? Isn't that why Jesus died? For what? What did you think Jesus died for? For you to have an OnlyFans, Maddie? Our sins. Was yes. it for you to have an OnlyFans, Maddie? Is it for Maddie? our sins? For? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. By the way, folks, our guests are linked in the description if you would like to hear more from them, especially because I think I clicked out of the list. So two seconds as I load this back up. Do want to mention, not only... Are Andrew, Rachel, Shark, and Maddie Cakes linked in the description box here on YouTube? But at the podcast, which is growing rapidly, which I want to say, folks, it's 100% ad free. We don't make a dime off of the podcast. So if that's useful, check out our podcast, Modern Day Debate, at fine podcast apps everywhere, where it has all of our guests, Andrew, Rachel, Shark, and Maddie Cakes linked there as well. So if you're listening via the podcast right now, go ahead and click away on their links. This one from Deeb says, Maddie, how does criminalization not decrease use? Yeah, so, I mean, there have been a lot of studies and and real-life blueprints of this policy in action um, that demonstrates that increased criminalization, um, drug use specifically, does not actually um, decrease usage. You need to look no further than the war on drugs here in Um, the United States, how usage of certain drugs, despite the cracking down by law enforcement, by um, Border Patrol, just because they were cracking down more, they allocated more resources to 
cr uh, cracking down on both usage and distribution and selling and production, um, it only led to increases in drug use. One example of uh, another country that took a bit of a different approach is in Portugal, where they, they um, basically made all drug usage legal, but, but they provided, um, they really focused on it treatment first, where they went to ensure that people are not only if they're going to choose to use drugs, that they're doing so safely. And if this becomes a problem where they start to abuse it, they have access to the resources they need to um, overcome that addiction. And overall, since that policy was put in place, they've seen overall drug usage plummet. And that's because when you make it um, it focused more on the healthcare and well-being of people and treating addiction as its own issue, which it is, then you are attacking the root of the problem and you see overall usage decrease. So there are a number of other examples um, throughout the world that have, have tried similar approaches, but that's where I get that perspective is that there is an actual real life example of why this works, and that's backed up um, by anyone who's doing meaningful research in this area. This one from Credo Ut Intelligam says, Shark and Maddie, if people have problems forming intimate connections because of mental problems due to OnlyFans, which is 98% adult content, they say, is it curing or helping to allow possible pornographic addiction as well? Sure, Maddie, can I take this since you took the last one? Okay, so when it comes to this, um, I, if, if we're, if we're, okay, so for one, I'm not going to grant that this is happening, the mental issues are happening because of the porn, because there's no research to prove that it does. Um, we can, I can say that if people do have mental, uh, mental issues and habitual and compulsive issues and their brain is just make, makes them somebody who's pretty compulsive um, and, and can do that, um, then I believe that it, it's not the, then if that's not the case, then why would we be attacking that? Because we're not attacking the root of the issue. It seems like we're attacking a bunch of auxiliary and satellite things that can be predictors of something else. But if you want to actually nip the problem in the bud, I think having these people actually genuinely be able to get help destigmatizing mental health issues and making sure that they have um, the social circles and making sure that they have the resources to reach out if they need help. Because people typically know that there's something wrong. Um, a, a big issue when it comes to actually getting out and getting help, it comes from uh, uh, not being able to have the resources near you, not having good resources. Um, being too close to like police is another thing um and so that's so i wouldn't say no don't uh, and so i would say no don't like remove that even though since like people are gaining something from it um i would say like just um help those people who need help which once again is proven to be a very small amount of people who genuinely have issues due to porn consumption or genuinely have issues correlated with porn consumption you got it, this one. Coming in from, do appreciate your question. To the nose, where do you get your morality from? From Deej. Oh. Is it, as you ask, is that, are we the nose? Yes. <laughs> okay. That um, seems to be a Jewish reference, by the way. I don't oh, know if yeah. that, yeah. The no? Correcting. The no position. Where do you oh, get no position. Up? I thought you said the oh, nose. Oh, to the yeah. nose. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. To, to the I people who say, say no, they don't cuss them. Okay, great. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll just make it quick. I mean, my my uh, moral framework, I would say, comes from, um, I would largely my, my upbringing. It comes from my experiences, um, just living day to day. And when we talk about, I mean, I don't know if I would call myself a full uh, utilitarian, um, which I think was inferred um my moral framework is a bit more complicated than that, but I would say largely it's from like what I was taught growing up and my own experiences where you see when um, you harm others, even when it's done unintentionally, um, it's always impact over intent and um, a continuous, a, a mindset of continuous growth and, and self-reflection. 
Um, I would say that comes from a number of sources, but largely it was like my family, the way I was raised and um, the community that I was surrounded with uh, and still am surrounded with my entire life. My morality is completely selfish because I <laughs> think about what if that was me? Right. So it, treat your, uh, it's treat others how you want to be treated. OK, I, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. So I don't want it to happen to other people. I can't I'm not in people's heads. I don't know who they are, uh, but I can only imagine we have we have no clue if anybody else is sapient, but we can imagine that they probably are the way they interact with the world. So I'm just going to be like, yo, if I wouldn't want that to happen to me, I'm not going to have it happen to them. If I was put in that situation, this is probably what I wouldn't want to happen to me. And so that's how we come up with it. You got it. And thank you very much for your question. This one coming in from Samir Farsane says joining the military, police, cutting lawns, all these things do do guarantee your wages. Defiling yourself on the internet by showing your butthole, on the other hand, is just a lottery ticket. Um, sure. So when, when it comes to this, not everybody who does porn does um, or sex work here, I guess. We'll do sex works because like people keep using OnlyFans as like an allegory for or just like a sort of like satellite for actual porn. Um, it depends on what you mean by actual, like porn. Once again, adult content could be loots. I could if I if I made pictures, if I like made pictures and uploaded them on my like my Twitter account or something, I'd be uh, and I had like my shirt off and I was like proud. I was going to the gym. I'd probably put a I'd probably put like a, a sensitive tag on that if I just tweeted out on Twitter. I would consider that a little adult because people may not want to see my belly. You know, they may, I, I'm a little bit of a furry boy. They may not want to see that that day. You know, they're they're sitting next to grandma on the bus. Um, it, it could be something like that. And so, wait, what was the question again? Can you ask? Sorry, the ADHD got me. No problem. It was. Sorry. This is you. you got I'm 10 so sorry. Seconds. They said joining, joining the military or police or cutting lawns guarantees your wages. Defiling yourself on the Internet by showing your butthole, on the other hand, is just a lottery ticket. Okay, sure. Any content creation is just a lottery ticket. If you're if you try and be an actor, it's just a lottery ticket. Literally everything that involves not like a set wage that you'll get is a lottery ticket. That's not like an argument against this. this is an argument against like gig work and and unreasonable like other other acting and anything else that you could possibly do with an unfixed income. You got it. Anybody else on that? All right, this one coming in from Bolus Spaghetti says, Andrew, don't you know that there is no God? Yeah, well, you know, the um, you should go watch a video I made on YouTube about uh, debate tactics. One of the sections that I go over is saying everybody knows that isn't an argument, just so you know. So uh, just saying, don't you know? Don't you know? Isn't that true? Isn't that none of those are arguments? This one from shit channel for you. <laughs> Can we say shit on YouTube? They say remove yes. porn from the world porn is dangerous yes you got it this one no. coming in from week deed says andrew god's word is interpreted through his apostles so what quote unquote god said is from men that being said how is alcohol less harmful than only fans so i disagree with the premise of one uh that's first and then uh, second whether or not alcohol is more dangerous than OnlyFans or not is irrelevant to our argument. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it, Fetor Mephitis says, Luke one fifteen and Micah 2.11, among other places, should help Maddie regarding alcohol besides wine in the Bible. Maddie, would you like me to read Luke one fifteen to you? Um, I know, I don't know if it's Luke 115, but there is um, a passage where they um, say that anyone who practices drunkenness will not be welcome into the uh, kingdom of heaven. But yeah, I would love for you to read the rest of Luke. Luke 115 says, for he will be great before the Lord. He must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Although I don't know if that, uh, me reading that, I don't see how that says alcohol drinking alcohol is wrong but uh didn't it just say that you can't drink wine it says you know may not drink wine i think this was in reference to jesus it says for you will be great before the lord he must not drink wine or strong drink 
and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his... You got to be really careful with a lot of those verses because a lot of them are taken out of context, especially like back in the day, a lot of people purified their drinks with alcohol. And so that's why people, you know, they, they put some alcohol in a lot of their water because it can have like bacteria in it. So I would imagine that you would be, you would have some amount of alcohol. Um, I was but, wrong. Yeah, the context you, actually would, yeah, says we'll John the Baptist. Okay. But I don't know if it follows that if John can't do it, that nobody can. But... This one coming in from K Max McDonald says they warned me before that this is not an insult. They say does OnlyFans or porn in general harm men's desire to go and work for a woman or a relationship? Do loner men fear rejection so much that they prefer porn over working towards a relationship and subsequently don't actually develop the relationship skills they need for real relationships? I mean, personally, I would say as somebody who's experienced a lot of loneliness in my life and I've, I wrote like, um, and we, we recently made a video on it and everything. It's not simply because, oh, I don't want to go to talking, talking to girls, scary. I'm just going to sit in my room. It could be a lot of things. It could be anxiety. You have the uh, possibility of losing reputation. Um, it's really like when, when you take that masculine role. Um, and you're the person who's supposed to be like the initiator. You're supposed to be the strong person, the rock and the, like the sort of like relationship. It's difficult. And a lot of guys don't, do not comport to that. And society does not make that very easy. And so I, I feel like it's a little strange. Some people go, oh, they do this simply because the other option is there. That's why I talked about how like experiences are important. Everybody who like jerk, I, I don't believe that there's any, if somebody can provide it to me. I'd love to see it. If there's like 80% of people, of men who use porn say that um, they, they, they would much rather be like jerking off to, to like porn than having an actual relationship or being married. It's, it's a fallback that people can go onto and then imbibe in after other things have failed and other after other things have not worked out. But I highly doubt a lot of people use it as a crutch. And I haven't seen any information to prove that. This one coming in from do appreciate your question. Deej says, Maddie, how does we got that one? Danny T says, what does God say about porn or only fans customers? I think we know that Andrew, anything to add on that? This one from Tim Zimlick says, Porn in society leads to women wearing clown-esque quantities of makeup and burning their hair with chemicals. Ban porn and watch people return to normal. Nah, brother. So here, here's a really big thing a lot of people just don't understand is that it's just societal standards people look like that because it's what kind of it's people kind of want sorry like they wear makeup because people find it attractive they dye their hair like that because people find it attractive simply because you don't does not mean that you're you don't run the world buddy there are a lot of people who find those girls very 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 attractive um but you don't have to that's fine don't you got it also this, one. this is a wig <laughs> this one coming in from do appreciate is it really this one coming yeah. in Community of God says Maddie Cakes. How does one? Let's see. <laughs> All the ones start with Maddie Cakes. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for substantive questions. This one from Summer says, leave it to Summer. Trust me. This will be good. They say the quote, not everything on OnlyFans is porn, unquote, point is cancer. Everyone in this debate knows that they aren't debating OnlyFans worth as a platform the word only fans is just shorthand in this context um okay well it's true and okay. several times several times by the way this was brought up mm -hmm. uh mostly by chris who for some reason wanted to make some sort of bizarre mm -hmm. argument that well there's a few people who are rappers and this and that rachel correctly was like look 98 percent of it's adult content he wants to further qualify it and go well that can mean anything no, that's not really the crux of what we're after here. We're after the fact that it's mass nudity and pornography. Like, come on. It's and the reason that this was done was to clearly divert away from the topic. No, I just I just don't want to like accept something that uh, on its face could seem true. If we were just going to be talking, we we're talking about OnlyFans, period, and fine. But if we're going to be talking about it in the specific subsect of specifically porn content then we'd have to get data to talk about that like porn content i don't know 
what the demographics of those specific people are and what they do. Um, and so I don't, I wouldn't accept that as just simply a shorthand, just pulling from the website statistics just completely as is going to be completely, you know, uh, d like to, to demonstrate like exactly what goes on in um, that Seven, part. Oh, sorry. Samir Farsane strikes again, says access to the most attractive virtual love partners and discharging many times a week. Gross, Samir, says makes your life partner seem less attractive and makes you unavailable for them. So they're saying it, it hurts relationships. Maddie, but you said you regularly watch all sorts of porn with your husband. And she's going to end up divorced. I didn't say regular. I didn't say regularly. <laughs> Actually, the data says the complete opposite. So I'm a little worried about you and Rachel, but I know you guys will pull through. Um, I have some good recommendations. If well, you let's want. see. You've been married but, for three yeah. months and we've been married for 14 years. Mm, gross. That's gross. You guys are gross. Not the marriage part. Well, I don't, I don't understand. I said marriage and then you said, you know what gross. I'm going to do? I'm going to look for a porn where the people look just like you guys. I'm sure that you are. <laughs> next. Sure that you are. Mm. James, no, part... I'm scared. This was no, from, people, I don't people know. Porn bad, but... this, well, Brittany, uh, Brittany, everybody's friend on the panel in chat provoked. Brittany says, Hey Maddie, you have lipstick on your teeth. Yeah, I know. I have it on my, my face too. I probably swallowed a bunch. Hi, Brittany. Love you, girl. On screen. How many of you on screen have had a run in with Brittany? Shark, are you the only one that hasn't yet? I've I, I've never spoken to the woman in my life, and I don't really plan on it. This one from Tim Zimlick says, how do the pro porn side explain how virtually every single person who quits porn reports having a profound change in mental clarity and health? Uh, I mean, the same reason why you would, why if you buy into sort of like an eating habit or like some sort of like the traditional medicine type thing, why those people would experience the same sort of, oh, I feel so much better. Or, oh, go ahead. You want to speak? Go ahead. It's the placebo effect. Really? Sure, You're yeah. saying it's the placebo effect? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. People here. And here's a really interesting thing. As somebody who's like gone to a church before, um, I forget what the line is uh, exactly. But I remember uh, sitting in the room when I was an adult and them talking about how there are a lot of guys who believe that due to it was like a it was a Protestant church, but um, uh, how a lot of guys, they were scared because of how some people interpret the Bible there. They felt bad for feeling sexually attracted to like even their wife, right? They felt like they were committing a sin there. Um, you can teach people, you can tell people that things are like, this is bad, that's bad all of the time. And once you do it for long enough, they can actually believe it. And then they can feel like something's better because they quit. They could, those people could actually have been addicted to porn. Some of them, absolutely. And if they were, then yeah, like not being, not being like, Compul compulsed and, and like doing that sort of stuff and being late for work because you're jerking off yeah absolutely improves your life but I, I don't believe that what actually happened was the porn hurt you and now you're better this one coming in from do appreciate your question this one from provoked Brittany as well it says congrats maddie didn't think someone could be worse than andrew and rachel this one thank you <laughs> um did i get i know you said i had some on my teeth did i get it this one coming in yes. from... No, no, you need to smear a little bit more over here. The joke's over, Andrew. This one coming She's in... She's so funny, you guys. Isn't she funny? From joke's over, Sh Rachel. Tim Zimlick strikes again, says, How many researchers or journalists, if not a huge majority, are contaminated with bias because of their own porn addiction? Uh, not many. I, I don't believe that there are many people that are really that addicted to porn. Very few people are actually addicted to porn um uh, i i mean like we can uh, imagine that everybody is uh everybody is biased against everything and so um the only thing that i believe is the only correct thing because listen i'm a, I'm a big brain smarty and everybody else is out to get me you got it this one coming in from do appreciate your question Kyrie irving says maddie slash shark do you believe in any form of virtue ethics can man's full virtuous potential be reached while consuming hardcore adult porno? Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you yeah, believe Cam. what virtue ethics do you believe in? I told you. Um, I answered that question a few questions ago. I don't know if you were paying attention or if yeah, you yeah, yeah. Down. Answer it again. No, I already answered it. I'm not well, gonna like. I do mean, you I don't think service. you did. I'm I not gonna you do you lied. a service, and so I already answered that question. And then the question, the next question was that if I think uh, consuming porn would um, allow people to still reach their full virtuous uh, epitome, nirvana, whatever, I say yeah. Do you got it? This one yeah. coming in from. Do you appreciate it? Fetor Mephitis strikes again, saying that proof that porn is unhealthy. I went on a masturbating binge yesterday. Just got out of the ER for severe dehydration. Damn, brother. You got to, for one, DM me. Let me know how many we can compare. Uh, and two, you got to make sure you drink water because you're going to hurt yourself. Don't do that. And also, probably don't do it again. <laughs> Also, probably don't do it again. Take care of not yourself. Not just okay? not just water. Make sure you have Gatorade or some sort of um, electrolytes, electrolytes as well. Mm -hmm. That's true. You can you can burn a lot of calories. Bowl of spaghetti drinking. says, "Aren't pedophiles common in Christianity?" Oh no. Uh, there there is a, a, com a commonality in the Catholic Church and pedophilia, but there's also a commonality between public schools and pedophilia, which is something that you'll see the left push quite a bit. What we can kind of gather is that pedophilia gathers towards wherever the children are. So if there's a lot of children in churches, pedophiles will gather there. Since there's a lot of children in schools, pedophiles tend to gather there. So, yes, there is a correlation there for sure. Wherever there's children, there are sure to be people who want to exploit them. This one from Deej says, how does agency justify... Also, we're not Catholic. Deej says, how does agency justify exploitation? It doesn't, but you could argue that people are exploited, their labor is exploited in a number of jobs. Um, I'm just saying that people have a choice um, to do what they want when they're 18 and when they're a legal adult. Just you just like they contradicted can choose, yourself. Literally, just, like just like they can choose, just <laughs> like they can choose. I know it's very funny, Andrew. God, you just contradicted so funny. yourself. You're like, people okay. can choose whatever okay, they Andrew. want, but agency yeah. has nothing to... Okay. I'm saying, I, did you, were you listening? Because I said agency and exploitation are are different things because whatever. But um, people, people have the agency to choose what they want to do when they're 18, when they're an adult, just like they can choose whether or not they go into the military, just like they can choose whether or not they want to mow lawns. But they they have that choice when they are 18. Doesn't mean that people around them have to support it, even if it ultimately is going to lead to a negative outcome to that person, they still have the agency to make that decision for themselves. And that's independent of potential um, exploitation. Exploitation would happen should they be forced against their will to do something. You got this one coming in from do appreciate your question. Music F3B says boxing is profitable but dangerous. We would all agree that boxing because you want money is different from boxing because your boss is threatening to fire you if you don't. I don't get it either. This one from I think I think it's probably like I mean, a question about like I, I like how the different types of exploitation like the yeah, sort coercion. of like background noise radiation everybody needs to eat and um so they need to do something for work and being forced into it when that wasn't something that you signed up to actually do um and you didn't and you don't know what you're getting yourself into i would i would imagine i think i think that he's putting forward the destiny argument of can you sacrifice at a younger age doing something that's terrible for you like you do in sports like you could with sex work but that's my take or like cigarettes Oh, no, cigarettes wouldn't qualify. No, no, very different. Very different. No, it's just it doesn't follow from what the question's asking. The, the okay. question's asking about a specific kind of work, not a destructive drug habit. Okay. You got it. Thank you very much for this question coming in from, do appreciate it, Community of God says, Child of Adam, let not Satan tempt you as he did with your parents in paradise, stripping their clothing to show them their private parts. Quran 727. You know, I, I don't I don't have any words on the Quran, but when I was in college, I do remember there were some very beautiful um, uh, Muslim women and I made one of them my friend and she's a very nice person. This one from Maddie TRCB Digital Minefield says BHM and BPF are undefeated. 
I know BPF is you, Andrew, big papa fascist. Who's BHM? Is that? That's me. What's it stand for? Based homeschool mom. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> this is what from Samir Farsain says, though not an excuse, I believe many parents cut their children from financial help too soon, forcing them to find ways to pay for college, rent, or food. So the... They aren't for OnlyFans, but they are granting the point that sometimes young people have a hard time financially. This yeah, parents from- need to take care of their children better. There are a lot of parents that once they feel like their kids turn 18, that they're just, oh, oh, no, no, my OBS crashed. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. No, you're up. You guys we hear you me. fine. Yeah, we can hear you. No, my, my OBS crashed. Oh. I'm not sending you guys through we my stream. stream. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go go on without me. I need to fix this. No problem. Kay so Lewis says, why would OnlyFans pay for that which is free? I think they're saying, why would the customers pay for OnlyFans when it's well, free? Well, that's because of the it's because, because of the parasocial relationship I was talking about. So it gives the person it's kind of like the cam girl thing. Uh, it's OnlyFans is kind of a cam girl service type of a platform. So it's like it gives you this false sense that, well, yeah, I'm sending her money and asking her. So like most of the creators will have like, oh, if you DM me an extra 50 bucks, I'll do a specific photo shoot or video and a theme that you like, something like that. And it gives the person this false sense that they do have some sort of relationship with that content creator. So it's different than just like, going onto a free porn site and watching a random video in that way. And that's one of the reasons it's more insidious and more dangerous, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I think that it absolutely has the possibility to be worse. Um, it depends on how it's used. Uh, I, I talk about it and a lot of other sex workers, workers talk about you shouldn't be trying to form a sort of like friend relationship. You need to always make sure that no, you all don't know each other and you all can't be friends. Um, I, but personally, I would much. I, I think it's way cooler to actually buy something from somebody. Same way that I buy a lot of my things from like little Etsy shops, and I like get the little card, and they're like, "Thank you so much," or the handwritten card, and I'm like, "Thank you so much for buying." No, I think I think that's very nice. It's a, it's a nice touch that you don't get from like a big box cringe um, corporation. I just put a poll in the chat right now. This is an honest folk, so you can Google it if you want to know. I can't see, even me as the person who put the poll up, I can't see who responded which way. I'm, I was curious, how many of you have ever used OnlyFans, including right now, if you happen to be using it? I'm curious because I was thinking about that as that we were kind of, I was like, I wonder how many people are actually OnlyFans content uh, you could say subscribers when we did this debate. So that poll is out there right now. I'm intrigued to see the results in a few minutes. This one from Spartan up North says the Wilsons won public education system zero. Oh, well, I didn't oh no, no. It's first. I mean, it's a master's degree. In fact, that's what we're up against. I'm it's the master's degree. Yeah, it's pretty clear who has the master's degree here. And yeah, who are, who are the buffoons? Who are you the should stay buffoons? at home. Let's get oh, homeschooled. This one from yeah, it says the smeared Good makeup one, lady. Guys. <laughs> okay. Do you guys want? Do you guys want the girl with the master's degree, like telling people and teaching people, or me, the person who made sense and had data and could mm. articulate her positions? I mean, what does Jesus fuck, say? Keep making fun of me for homeschooling my kids, though, because you Jesus clearly, say? yeah, you. Yeah. What does Jesus say? This one coming. Are in you from... okay? Are you having a mental breakdown over there? Is this no, your Joker you? moment? Are you? No. This oh, one okay. from. Polarized Squirrel says, Rachel, you said that porn was harmful because it keeps people from making relationships. But how does this help society as a whole? Not all relationships are beneficial to both parties involved. So I think they're saying like, well, if the people weren't engaged in these parasocial or OnlyFans type relationships, just because they would theoretically, as an alternative, go form real relationships in the world with people that doesn't mean those would be good relationships out there. Yeah, but this is the weak, weak argumentation. This is the problem with people not understanding justification ever is like, well, some relationships are bad. Ergo, why not have parasocial relationships? It's like they don't correlate. One does not negate the other. It's that's just a non sequitur. Can I I do something super quick, James? Yeah. Rachel, what's your definition of a parasocial relationship? Uh, it's where you have 
some kind of commodification maybe or something where one party is under the impression that there is something meaningful and interpersonal between the two people, whereas the other person does not, but gives the impression that they do in order to keep getting the money. So, I mean, everybody knows that if you buy Belle Delphine's bathwater, she's not sending it to you because she loves you Mm -hmm. and wants you to have it. It's because you gave her money, right? But the the thing that happens to men is that if they get any sort of feedback, some of these like really lower on the social rung guys that really feel like they can't cut it in the real world, they get this impression that it's as good as they're going to get or it's something like it and they're just going to roll with it because it kind of gives them a little bit of a dopamine hit. It gives them a little bit of a of an oxytocin hit to be like, oh, she paid a little attention to me or well, at least she responds to my email and calls me sweetie. Right. So it's like another exploitative relationship in this whole setup. So men are just too dumb to recognize when it's transactional. No, I'm saying this whole system of pay for sex and pay for porn is exploitative in both directions. It's harmful for the consumer. It's harmful for the creator. It's harmful for society at large. And it's harmful for family structures and for children. Yeah, Okay. Um, But again, you're saying it's because these loner guys who think, oh, she must love me. She must do this. And the assumptions that they make, and that's what's damaging. Um, But so like men are just too dumb to recognize. On one level, they know, okay, she's not really my girlfriend. But on another level, it's like, yeah, but she called me sweetie and that made me feel good. And like the girl down the street won't give me the time of day. So like, this is acceptable. It's an acceptable yeah. replacement. The heroin addicts are just too dumb to stop doing heroin. Yeah, where's all your compassion for these people? You're so you wow, have that's so a much great compassion one one. for all the other victims that's in life, except one in this one. debate. That's so the one, one guy one turns comparison. into a libertarian when he's arguing us, and then Maddie turns into a fuck everybody. They're they're adults with their own agency. Yeah, and, total you know, total moral nihilist. The, Sorry, yeah, I guess I really just crazy. I just expect I just have higher um I have a higher opinion of men and think they can tell the difference. I don't think they're like this useless like unable to differentiate between what's a real relationship and what's not i have a higher opinion of men so it's it's kind of disappointing that you assume this is how like men treat this this is really disappointing wait your your low opinion of them is really sad wait it's really sad she's arguing a strong man and she's being a dumb bitch again she's literally being a stupid didn't you say that you wouldn't recommend that you wouldn't recommend for men to join the military is that because you think that they're too stupid and that they will if you don't recommend it did, did Rachel not say that these men don't no, recognize no, you, what you this is? Just no, I'm done arguing about your premise because your premise is saying that like yeah, men can't understand you think that this. They are. You think they are, Just right? take the L, my dude. Like, you think it's, that they are smart Your opinion no. is so you not, low. Your opinion Maddie, is so low of men and that's heartbreaking. You're not fooling anybody. You some, have, of my, you some of my closest friends are men. You have kicked in this debate and Some of my closest friends are men. I'm married to a man. I think men are very smart. Well, yeah, why don't you define man? I'm done with this. I'm done define, with this. Define, it's yeah, un- it's unhelpful. You're done, done. unhelpful. You're done ben and over. Thanks, says, Rachel. AKA Abel. Ben Thorpe, a.k.a. Abel, says, Andrew and Rachel, you've made this entire debate about worldviews, <laughs> but doesn't your worldview hold that dinosaurs aren't real? I have no idea what he's talking about. This one coming in from Polarized Squirrel. Got that one. This one from Mr. Monster says the Bible doesn't say anything bad about OnlyFans, so you're lying. God doesn't say it's bad. We're not supposed to actually engage that, right? This one, I I do want to mention, because before I felt like the way I read that question, because I said OnlyFans relationship versus real relationship, which probably makes it sound as if I'm slamming the OnlyFans relationship. Oh, You are. I do have to say, I mean, (laughs) you are. Is it true that like to interact with the only fans person and like get them to message you back, you have to pay? I like does like I, I'm only asking this not to take sides, but out of personal curiosity, I'm like, am I biased so, for saying that's not real? Like if I had I mean, to pay, it, it, it one would of really my, depend. Huh? Sure, it would really depend on what you mean by like a real relationship. Me being cordial with like the girl who works at my local like Hobby Lobby's cashier shop, and every time I see her, she goes, "Hey, Chris, hope you had a great weekend." I'm like, "You too, ma'am." 
Um, that's a real relationship. Like people that you know in your Discord server, that's a real relationship. And people who you have business transactions with and they know you, at least they recognize your your like name. Like I know the people, I can recognize the people in my chat. I would consider that a real relationship as in I know them. It's not a personal relationship. We don't know much about each other. Or in the sense of I've talked about my life, I don't know fuck all about them. There's way too many of them to actually know. So sure, you could say like real, but if you mean real as in like sort of like real life, we've known each other, we've we've shared like intimate like relation like we share intimate like time and you know information with each other in, in a way that's different from like a business transaction, sort of like, hey. Nice boobs, ma'am. I, I I would imagine that that's fine. But once again, you'd have to figure that out. But yeah, I feel you. You got it. This one from Samir Farsane says, why defend something that guides tens of thousands to fantasize about their sisters, moms, daughters, and grandmas? I don't think they mean like their own sisters and grandmas. It sounds like a self-report. No, they that's say... that. No, that's a legitimate thing. They are saying now that the most common porn searches are like, stepsister stuff, stepmom stuff, brother, sister stuff, things like that. And this is what I was talking about, how people get into watching porn somewhat innocently and they get to weirder and weirder and weirder things to get the same stimulus response. So that's a a real thing. That part just wasn't proved that you need that like people who are porn addicted have like some massive drop in like dopamine responses to just erotic images. Like in what I sent you, it, it showed specifically that the people who do, they have the same actual response, dopamine response and brain activity as people who don't watch porn and people who, what my bad, the PPUs, the people who say they're probably porn users and people who use porn sometimes and people who don't use porn they have the same exact response even if they claim that they have a porn issue so that part just that's just not true well wait a second you said that it's not proven right but it was demonstrated you just rejected the data because you you chose you chose in a biased way to only engage with your own data and refused to engage with what was provided to you Shark, we should have gone with his intuition because that seems to be what the only thing that works. So we'll we'll draw from that data set next time. Thank you for your my input. intuition is that you're an idiot. Results. Thank you. Noted. I'm writing that down. Amazing. Results from the poll are in. Have you ever used OnlyFans, including now? No was 84%, and yes was 15%. Which is strange because there's only two options, so one percent is missing. I have no idea how this is possible. But this one coming in. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. This one from Samir Farsin says, Maddie, wipe that off. Halloween was yesterday. No. Big man says, Rachel and Andrew, how does porn affect women? So does he mean like the women who watch it, I would guess? I think. Yeah. I yeah. Think so. Maybe um, he it has both. It, yeah, it affects women as well. And I think women are like make up a third of uh, porn u- users, consumers now. So that's not good. <laughs> I mean, the fact that it's so widespread and and that women are also having problems with it. This that's one not, No, we don't want that. Tim Zimlick says, Maddie Cakes, I apologize about the clown makeup comment, hun. Calls you Thanks, babe. Says I'm passionate about the porn pandemic. Yeah. Porn demic. Mm. Samir Farsane says no side to the no position side. Do you believe parents' professional life, their pride, their image, their faith could be harmed by their children being exploited online? Um, oh geez, you're, you're buying, I don't know where, okay, we'll unpack this a little bit. If you mean exploited, as in they like post like lewds or nudes, um, then possibly, but these days I feel like it's not like how it was in the past where even like in my family's lifetime, where if you had like a tattoo, you could be fired. Like if you had like images, like leak of you, what's more likely to happen. I think these days is people consoled you and they're like, yo. I'm so sorry that happened to you more than more than get you, you, you get fired or something like you'll get shit. Like there, there will always be people who will want to harm you and want to hurt you and want to be cruel to you simply because they like cruelty. Um, but I mean, it's definitely possible. I find it less likely from what I've seen these days. Yeah. I have nothing to add. Kiwi in Springfield saying, if your spouse says you have to pay to speak to them anymore, 
Would we consider it wrong? If you had to do the same for a friend, wrong. If it's a stranger on the internet, why is it right? Are you okay? Is this person okay? That is that that question like it shows some like deeper like sort of like bad shit going well, why on. Why don't you continue? Do you with smell it? Why don't oh, well, you I was about to. with it? I was about to. You are susceptible to parasocial relationships, brother. Like the celebrity on your TV, your streamer, like the girl who works at your local hobby lobby, these aren't your friends. OK, like this person may like think acquaintances and businesses and simply because you've like exchanged some messages means you're like a friend or something. No, like she is not your friend. You just buy like cute pics off of her. Like the, the, the girl at Starbucks is not your friend. She works at a job. And when she quits, you will never see her again. I'm, I'm sorry. You need to, honestly, if you think that you need your therapy. It's totally ridiculous because what he's asking you specifically is a broader sense. And of course, you target him. And say, oh, it's a self-report. Let me direct this at you. Why don't you know any better? And it's ridiculous. He's I, asking, I, you guys never I, I answer the question. He's talking the about question. a phenomenon. He answered the question. Engaged with it so dishonestly. I answered the question. Did I not answer the question? You did. No, no, not really. Because okay, Andrew the would question, not recognize the an answer if it. The question had intent behind it, butt. and the intent wasn't directed at him personally. Okay, well, I still answer the question. He answered I, the I question. May have, I may have thrown some no, sludge in no, him, you, you, but I, no, I, I answered the question. That's not answering I said the they're not if your you purposely friends, misinterpret you are Andrew, having a business a interaction. They are not your friends. Yeah, you purposely misinterpreted You're having a business interaction. It. They're not your friends, okay? Your wife is not, like, on, honestly, if my wife was, like, an, an OnlyFans girl, you, I better be getting those pics for free, you know? Like, if I, and if I, if I never saw her and she only sold me pics, I, I think that, that's not a relationship. Brother. Yeah, but his, you never contended with why he, he asked you. Why is it that you would say it's wrong for you to have to pay, pay for play with your own wife? But not with a complete stranger. The relationship That's is completely point. different. I, I think it's. We I think know it's that wrong. they're different. I know think that. it's wrong. <laughs> That's the once answer. Once again, it's baked Dumb. in to say the reason why I think it's wrong is because they're not analogous. I think it's wrong for me to expect a blowjob from the girl who works in my McDonald's, my local McDonald's window. Okay? They are analogous. You say, you claim everything is not analogous, regardless of what it is. If I had a peach and an apple, you'd say it's it's not analogous to compare them as fruit. It's ridiculous. He wants to know I mean, a specific. He wants to know a specific. I mean, in the sense of they're just relationships, sure. No, like, answer the thought pattern. I said it was wrong. I give you a reason why it was wrong. Do you it's know a business an interaction, a, uh, uh, like a, an intimate, like friend interaction, and a business interaction, and an intimate reaction uh, in, interaction, and like selling something to somebody are different the expectations are different they don't owe you anything they're not in a relationship with you you just want to buy their pictures it's simply a business exchange they're not your friend but they never have been. They to the never fact, be. he's alluding to the fact that the expectation shifts based on these bizarre dynamics that this type of pornography and parasocial relationship introduces that you don't have when you have a wife and you have people you're interacting with face to face. And he's yeah, asking I mean, you, he's yeah, like, you would, say, you would say that this is immoral, but that this other thing is fine and you don't yes. care because as long as it's strangers who are doing the exploitation, that's okay. No, nope. listen, I, <laughs> it's, it's just, he's being willfully I, ignorant. I, I mean, I don't think he's being willfully, willful, willful, willfully ignorant. Just like we just have very different worldviews. I mean, I just don't. Ex I think it's very odd to expect personal, mutual sort of like intimacy from somebody who did not offer it to you, to somebody who you did not have a conversation with about this, somebody who seems to not want it because they have no clue who you are, and then go, "I can't believe this. These things are different." When you're in a you're in a legal binding relationship with your wife and you only go to see this person when you simply want like some pictures. The expectations are far different and it's baked into it. I, I just don't I, I just don't but the bigger know. question here is, can you guys go the rest of this debate without edge lording about how cool degenerate behavior is? Because I would say, no, you cannot. Because both you of you love degenerate? news what like, do you mean? oh, if I did What's something degenerate? totally degenerate, it would be cool. <laughs> Just What's like, just define de define degenerate because I don't think porn's degenerate without anything. morals. Without morals, okay. morals I, according I, to who? I am curious. James, you may need to move on. Theoretically, <laughs> just on that last question, like if 
if someone like a friend, like two friends, like, would it be wrong if like, let's say a friend and a friend, like, uh, a guy and a gal, they're friends. And then he, like, they're legit friends, like in real life. And then he becomes her only fans customer. Is it, is it like immoral? And if it, if it isn't, then it's like, but then why did having a relationship first make any difference? Cause like, it sounded like your answer shark was like, well, you already have a relationship with these people in your life. So it'd be wrong to do it to them where you say you have to pay for my pictures, but it like, if it's a stranger, it's not wrong. Cause it's just a business transaction. So like shark under your reasoning, does it mean that if a guy and a gal are friends and he's like, Hey, you're my friend, but like, I'm going to join your only fans. Like, is it wrong in that case? It would really depend on what she's comfortable with. If she's comfortable with people who she knows personally, um, knowing her only fans and being and being on there, then no, it seems like they are both people who are able to make reasonable decisions and come to a solution by themselves that works out for both of them. Um, I, 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 I here like for, for some people who aren't bought into this. OK, just you could just think about this. I just think I personally believe that in my my friend's family actually owns a bakery. I think it'd be shitty of me to walk into the bakery simply because they're my friend and go, give me free shit. Give me, give, give me, give me the cake you just made. Like, give me, give me it for free. I think it'd be kind, incredibly nice if they did. And that'd be, and that would show our relationship, right? That could, that could be a, a component of it. But I, I think the, like, the, yo, fuck you, we're friends. Give me free shit. I think that's pretty like shittily entitled, and they are making that because they want to make money. Just asking for free shit from somebody's business just because they're your friend is kind of rude, honestly. So it seems to me throughout the course of this couple hours, you guys really are utilitarians. You think that morality comes down to consent and preference, and I haven't heard any other standard. So is it just consent isn't consent inherently preference? utilitarian? Consent is um, a concept uh, separate of that, but I would say a lot of it is consent because the dynamics between these different people and the relationships that you have a lot of that, like not all of that is transactional. But so like my any, relationship between myself and my standard? best friend is not transaction. I don't want to listen to you yammer for 30 minutes. Is there well, anything clear. besides consent and preference or is that it just consent? I would say also preference. they're not harming each other and yep. specifically not harming each other in a way where I believe that the state should step in. And why so do you consent guess, like, another and preference. Yeah, consent and preference. <clears throat> sure. preference. Okay. Unless, of course, that. you don't want a, you know, stabby, then I'm sure they're going to enforce their will on you probably, right? You don't think anybody has the right to refuse certain medical interventions that the state deems necessary, right? I wish no in, one that case, one more time. in that case, consent is not necessary. I would venture to guess. So you're, I, this is just like the dumbest conversation I've ever had. I think we can move on. It's very stupid. No, it's not dumb. She's asking no, you it's if really mandatory dumb. vaccinations by the state are fine your with you. Logic, the you limits of bimbo. your, uh, the <laughs> limits that the, the limits of your ignorance, know no bounds. My That's days, I would say my days I, I, of I would, not taking you seriously are coming to a middle. <laughs> sure, I, I would say. Love that you're when it saying to, that with your stupid mm -hmm. face and your smeared lipstick. <laughs> my your what? Lipstick. Is there something on my face, Rachel? Rachel, Rachel, what? What did you have? I, I, I would say, I would say, like Manny. the damage. So when talking oh, about this on like Notice a societal I've never standpoint, you a bad name. from a shark. Come on. No, but I did. Yeah, Talking about this from a societal standpoint, are. I believe that we can make a calculation to show that we can make a calculation mm -hmm. to be like, yo, I mean, uh, you are violating somebody's agency, but we can do some more here. And the violation of that agency is not so egregious that we need to not do it. And the benefit can be good enough to where we can be like, OK, we can be like, let's we, we can do this. We can violate some agency here and make things better for everybody. And the likelihood of this being incredibly negative for a large uh, portion of people is very low. If we can do that, then then fine. Well, this is why we wanted to have your foundations down, because we would have asked you why you think that agency in and of itself is some type of moral preference or proposition to begin with. Why do you think that more that agency is something by which we should have any metric for morals with? why agency is something we should have metrics for morals with. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Um, because I feel like people should be able to d do what they want without harming other people. Right. You have mostly. no foundation. It's just preference. Do you get it now? Now you get it. Finally. Thank God. Thank 
Do you consider Catholics and Protestants to be Christians also, or is it just um, your Orthodox? Shut up, Maddie. I have a question. Answer my question. Do you consider them to be Christians? (laughs) Maddie. see, you have no framework. No, you didn't say anything. (laughs) Oh, my God. Shut up, Maddie. This one from... I I pray for your children. This one from... Dear Satan. Be quiet. Pray you you actually have some, Maddie. Dear (laughs) Satan. K. Max McDonald says, do Rachel and Andrew wish that Congress would pass a law regarding porn then? Of course they do. Can you uh, can you repeat the question real quick? I was too busy laughing at Maddie. Go ahead. I want to ask if you want to pass a law through Congress regarding banning porn or something like it. Uh, of course. Absolutely. We think that uh, conservatives have as much moral right to utilize the state as secularists do using our religious paradigms. And I've never heard a good argument for why that's not true, that we should have that secularists somehow have the market cornered on morality. They most certainly don't. We think that we should be able to utilize the state for our moral aims as well. This one from Samir Farsadian says, Maddie is a very likable person, smart and funny. I wish that she would just review her positions and she'll make a great debater. Rachel and Andrew already there. Mm-mm. Disagree. This one from Big Man says, forgive them for they know what, not what they do. Hudahef Hikyu says, parasocial relationships are bad, says the people who have a relationship with a man who do, who died 2,000 years ago and only talks to them in their heads. Andrew and Rachel, I think that they're referring to your Christian beliefs. So it's a parasocial relationship to worship God? <laughs> I'd love to hear that justified, How how you think that that's parasocial all that matters is it's super cool to make fun of christians and call them stupid yeah the same thing of course they wouldn't do to a muslim as when chris was asked he knew a muslim and that was a beautiful person it's the evil christians that must be in some way defamed or in some way attacked huh yeah. i just said christianity I just said she was is cute. cringe but other religions are cool and respectable well i i i had a i had a great friend back when i worked at mcdonald's i took pictures for her and she was very christian they even had like a, a crucifix in their uh living room well then i guess was, some christians nice. are okay huh? uh, i never said they were all bad <laughs> I'm... yeah christians are fine right well, well and you would consider yourself one of course man no after she sat here mocking us the whole time based on our christian i don't consider you reflective of christianity but i yeah, how would you... it doesn't matter what you think yeah That's a good thing. You're, you have no moral foundations you have no foundations at all as chris oh, were you just, not listening chris just showed us he did, literally just sh- showed us he finally Wait, got andrew, it why'd you andrew why'd you just jump to me like thinking that i hate Christians, why'd you say that? Well, I was using the example that it's not fashionable to shit on Muslims, but it's fashionable to shit on Christians. Um, okay. Well, I mean, I, I think I think Muslims deserve shit too. Like some of them do pretty bad shit. I think Yeah, ISIS would you draw bad. the Prophet Muhammad? I, I have no clue what he looks like, but Yeah, I, I know. Mean, Could maybe. you just like make it up and draw him real quick and hold it up to the screen? Why? Have, no, actually, I can't. No, I didn't think so. Dark. Well, it's mostly because I don't have any art supplies near me. But Dark Bag says, I think we can all tell who is still dealing with some childhood trauma. Please seek help and learn to truly love yourself. Peace. Are they talking about Andrew? Uh, this one from you to have HQ says, we got that one. Kyrie Irving says, Maddie, are you a utilitarian or a deontologist? If I remember right, utilitarian, you said. Uh, I would say I, you just saying it like as a blanket utilitarian, I think would be a bit reductive. Um, I would say a lot of my moral uh, framework is stemmed from utilitarianism, but it's a bit more complex than that. But like that, that maybe is a, a decent launching point. How is it more complex? Do you mix in deontology? Or do you is want it just me to, cons- do you want me to go I'm into just asking specifics? if it's purely consequential. Do you, may, what, do you want me to like just go into every single specific? Just asking if it's in what regard? In, if in what it's regard purely consequential? consequential, if you only care about consequences. No. Okay, so there's a deontological aspect to it. Universal morals. No, I don't. I don't believe in universal morals. Then you're a consequentialist, you dumb fuck. Why did no, I'm not stupid. No, I'm not. Okay. This one. How many off. cigarettes have you had? I think you're on what ten now. Wait, so you don't believe in universal morality? So there's different morals for different people? 
I believe people have different morals. Do you not? There's no moral standard, though. There's no, no I don't universal think there's... morality at all. No. Oh, that's not very equitable or or equal equality uh, loving of you. That's... Okay. Ooh. Okay. This one from do appreciate it. Dan Zamet says, Maddie reminds me how fortunate we are to live in a world where women are treated like human beings who have rights and are no longer controlled by men. I think that's a Thanks. good compliment. This one from... <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> this, this one. Thanks, Andrew. Puff, puff. P Pineapple Beast. Platypus says, <laughs> which is best? This question is from a god. To be a person or to be a people? I don't understand that. Which, which is best to be a person or a people? Yes. Um, I, I think that's, it seems like what they're asking is like, what's better, collectivism or uh, in, individuality? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. That could that um, make sense. Sure. I mean, I guess, I, I don't know how to answer that question. I haven't, I haven't put like the most amount of thought into that specifically. Rights of person know. over the collective. Pretty... Oh, the rights? I yeah. thought it, oh, it just seemed like, I don't know, it just seemed like, what, what would they imagine to be better? I thought it seemed like it was just asking me from my, like, framework, what would be better? Uh, for, uh, for me, I, I think I would say it's better to be a, a person more than a, a people, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, I think it'd be great to, as a bunch of persons, to come together with, like, individual wants and needs and everything and try and do something good for, like, all of us, but at, at, at the core what we was where we're doing and we're doing things for like ourselves and not simply for others, because I think we're a lot less disposable than that. This one coming in from do appreciate your question. We only got a couple more here. This one is a last minute one from oh, Samir strikes again says what happens to only fan girls when they age and can't compete with younger girls and get deserted by their audiences. How do you transition to a real job at 40? I feel like this person must know my body of work because this is like one of my pet subjects that I talk about all the time, that we do women a terrible injustice by making them think they're always going to be young and fertile and have that power that comes with youth and fertility because it's very temporary. And in those formative years when you should be starting a family and building security that way, or even if you want to go to college and have a career and be a single woman your whole life, either of those things would be preferable to building your life around your sexuality, which is so temporary because there's always someone younger and hotter than you. It's a terrible thing to do to women. Then is oh. modeling um, also immoral because when, as you get older, you aren't going to get modeling jobs? I would never uh, recommend that unless, well, it's different though in this way because you can do modeling while you're going to college or, or having children or something like that and you can still do just fine. And it's not the same thing with having an OnlyFans. There's always going to be jobs that you can't get after having had an OnlyFans. Because of the stigma, right? No, not, not because... because of the stigma. So this is another baloney argument where it's like, well, if we just remove the why not stigma, then? because why can't we just remove the stigma from everything? We won't stigmatize everything. We'll just make everything permissible then. And then there's no problems as though well, what stigma about, what is what the about problem. Just, well, what about there's just a reason away. why there's stigma to certain behaviors and there should be. So, yeah. Okay, but what if we if, just take away the stigma from this? Would it be better? If you yes, have I mean. done pornography, there are going to be, be certain companies, because I'll explain it to you. There's certain companies, certain organizations of all different kinds, which may not want somebody working for them who because may have done pornography stigma. in the past. And that's perfect. No, it's perfectly reasonable and it's perfectly logical. Do you want your kid's kindergarten teacher to be a porn star? This is a bit, this has happened where OnlyFans models have gotten fired from jobs, they protest, and the courts say, look, we can't force people to hire you because you've done porn and they don't want to hire someone who's been naked all over the internet. That, so, so that like, would be what you're wait, saying is this. That's fine. By your that's... own standards, no, by your own standards of people are free to do what they want and they have agency and they, they get You're the consequences the of their choices, then they get the consequences of their choices. You Wait, can't that's, force that is others. true and you can be okay with that. And we could also say... We should. We want to change their mind to make them not think that. We could do that as well. Like these two things are not like mutually exclusive. On on top of the point where like I'm a I'm a con I'm a YouTube content creator. I probably can't get some jobs from some of the stuff that I've said online. I am perfectly happy with that yeah. because of the decision that I made as a person. And so sure, there are some jobs I can't get, 
fuck them. I, I am much happier doing this, and I'm much happier in a in a job choice that would be far Look, more compatible with me as a human being. You guys can sit here with your utilitarian being. nonsense of if we just remove the stigma, but it's like people are going to do things in life that are immoral and regretful and they're going to regret them and we should warn young people you, you have, about the consequences. I mean, you didn't know that they were going to be regretful. Just simply, I'm like, I don't think, That's I don't know how many OnlyFans users are going to are really like huffing and puffing and stomping their feet that they can't be like pre, some like some preschool teachers and some like some some districts in, in the country. Yeah, like, yeah, it's sure totally, that, totally not yeah. harmful when someone goes to your school and like shows pictures of your mom's boobs to your friends. I'm I think sure, what's more I'm harmful sure that that's is not showing, I think what's more, I think harmful, more harmful is, harmful is, is, no, is the kid knowing that the kid like know, having pictures of breasts and showing breasts to other people. And not the fact isn't that kid watching because that's breasts? a child having access to porn. I think that's the bigger issue. Uh, in sure, that that's bad too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't, you think, here, don't you think that if your friend when you were in school came over and was like, hey, look at what your mom's tits look like, bro, that that might have been slightly uncomfortable for you? Look, they're just yeah, going to be uncomfortable that they that had access to porn. Permissible. They're just going to argue that everything Since is permissible children. and everything is fine and everything is equal and they're fine with everything. Fine. They, and they, they've already exposed the fact that they they're have no listening. continuity okay. in their logic yeah. or their moral systems at all multiple times. So mm -hmm. we don't have to keep going with Fascinating, it. Fascinating, Rachel. Okay. This one I from mean, Barry. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think children having porn and showing porn to other children is bad, actually. It's just like bad. Yeah. But, but isn't it yourself. just a little bit worse if it's your mom? No, it's still bad. It's yeah, but worse. if we yeah, sat here and asked you to justify why it's bad, you couldn't do it. No, so I don't really care. It's a child. It's a child with porn that's bad. Are you saying it's not? You would say it's because your preference or because some sort of. So you, but you disagree. And you're muted. But yeah, you thing disagree. Thing is bad because thing is bad. That's but what you, you so just you disagree. Said. You no, guys you just said thing is. No, bad this is helpful. Is so and Andrew and Rachel, it's it's bad. Okay. Why is it bad? We will have to wrap up. It's twelve. It's coming towards twelve. No, why? Soon. Why is it bad? This Please one. Let's time. go to the next one. There are only two more. <laughs> they left. can't justify Barry their morality Switzer at all. Says, Barry Switzer says Andrew morality is based on evolution and intuition. Christians are privileged in the U.S., not Muslims. If such is true, then we evolve to be that way. So there is no <laughs> argument, right? If you're saying that oh, evolution God. created Christianity and therefore Christians are privileged, then we evolved for this to be true. This one from Kraz King One. This is the last one for the night. That's right. I, I did. I did forget. Some of you guys, Shark, are you on Eastern or Central Time? Uh, I I am on Eastern. Holy smokes! Um, okay, sorry. It is really late. So this is the last no, one. Yeah, us too. But I guess for chopped liver over here, Jane. Oh, I didn't know you Congrats. were. Okay. Well, don't worry. this one's there's been a, like a ton of questions, a lot of curiosity. OnlyFans is a hot topic. We'll, we'll stay. We'll stay till the end, man. Great. Well, good because this is a, an insult for you. This one from Craze King One, actually for Rachel. Oh, they say, Rachel, maybe we would take you seriously if you had a single argument instead of just insults. LOL. Well, I brought more arguments than anyone here, along with a few insults, because I like to bring some entertainment value. So you're welcome. Want to say thanks, everybody, for watching. All of our guests, Andrew, Rachel, Shark, and Maddie, can be found in the description box below. I got one thing I have to interject real quick. I'm sorry. All right. On the Crucible, we'll be taking Q&A. But did you guys know that you'll be able to find James on Rob Nor's stream this Saturday during his 24-hour stream? And I just wanted to let you guys know that. That's true. This is the first stream I've been invited to in about a year. So, uh, Samir, no, oh, we can't take any more questions. I told you. Let's see. Want to say, please ask your question to Shark. He's over at Twitch, by the way. He's streaming live. And also, what are you guys' main platforms? Maddie is streaming on Twitch. So, if you guys are familiar with Twitch, that's her main platform. And then... Yes, The Crucible, link down in the description box below. They're streaming on YouTube you, uh, right now. And, yes, I will be on this 24-hour stream. Thanks for the invite. And, folks, yeah, it's, you know, it's okay to invite me to stuff. Come on. But I want to say thanks, everybody, for being with us. It is going to be an amazing rest of your night. Hopefully you get good sleep. And thanks, Andrew, Rachel, and Shark, and Maddie, one last time for being with us. It's been a true pleasure.